Horses, featuring the world's best thoroughbreds, with $13 million and the title of Horse of the Year at stake. The racing community gathered in one place on one day at Arlington Park, a scenic race course located just a strong gust away from the Windy City. Built 75 years ago in 1927, the year the Babes swatted 60 and Lindy crossed the Atlantic, this venue has suffered through some difficult times. It even burned down in 1985, but now it has been reborn as one of the finest equine venues in the world. And today, for the first time, Arlington Park is the center of the racing universe. And in another first, every ticket for the Breeders' Cup was sold in advance. More than 40,000 people on hand for the eight races that make up the Breeders' Cup. Following a week of wet and chilly weather, we expected the sun to reappear today, and it's been trying to poke through the cloud cover without much success. Right now, it is still pretty chilly and figures to stay that way. 46 degrees, but just a few moments ago, the track was upgraded from good to fast, and the turf is yielding. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Costas, manning the position normally occupied by Tom Hammond. Our esteemed colleague is home recovering from heart surgery, and actually, they had to pass the smelling salts my way when they told me I'd be the guy filling in. I've been called many things over the years, but Railbird is not one of them. Luckily, I'm surrounded by experts, including Charles C. Canty. Eight races ahead today, Charles C., and first up, the distaff. And it's a compelling race showcasing Ozeri, who has been absolutely terrorizing the Phillies on the West Coast. She's here to square off with the best of the East Coast, but what's so surprising is everyone thought she would be this overwhelming favorite. She's only lukewarm at the windows. Look at that. She's 5-2. to two. The public is betting on the three top three-year-olds from the East Coast, and that is Farda Amiga, Take Charge Lady, and Imperial Gesture. So a little bit of a surprise. Azari has won nine out of ten races. She's trained by Laura Desaru, and Kenny Rice is in the paddock now. Thanks, Charlesy. Laura Desaru is calm, cool, and collected, and so is Azari, who brings that six-race winning streak into today's distaff. Laura, she has been standing here now for about uh, two or three minutes. Some of the other horses walking around. She looks like a pro. Uh, she is. She's well-schooled. We've done this twice this week, and uh, she's really enjoying the crowd. How about yourself? Your first Breeders' Cup race as a trainer. You seem very calm as well. Oh, it only, it lo only, only looks that way. <laughs> Her racing style is bad, and certainly in the last four races, she goes out to the lead and says, come and get me. Do you think that she can win that way today on a track that's rated as good right now? Well, it just all depends. Uh, there's the unknown uh, quantity of, of the mud, but um, she's uh, by a sire that usually gets good mud runners, and she's been enjoying the galloping in the mud, so we're just going to le leave it to Mike to play it as it comes up. And I'm sure if she wins this race big, Horse of the Year will be mentioned. Let's get, let's get to the winner's circle first. <laughs> good luck to you. Thank you, Laura Desaru, who is a 30-year overnight sensation. She took out her training license just three years ago. She has three horses and three races today, including one of the favorites in the distaff, Azari. Now let's go over to Bob Newmeyer. Well, thanks, Kenny. It wasn't that long ago when this man shocked the racing world. It was the Belmont Stakes. War Emblem was looking for a triple crown, but his Sarava at 70 to 1 lit up the tote board and put a big smile on trainer Ken McPeak's face. Today, it's not the three-year-old Colts we're going to talk about. It's the three-year-old Philly Take Charge Lady. What can you tell us about her and assess her chances in today's race? Well, we're not going to get 70 to 1 on her, no, are we? Three to 1 right now, as a matter of fact. She's doing great. You know, we've been trying to time everything as the year went on, and we skipped the summer campaign with her, and we focused in on the spinster and the distaff, and we think we got everything, you know, dead set for today, and you know, hopefully uh, Edgar can get it done. You know, he's uh, already won one on the card, and... We're confident. Edgar Prado, meaning his jockey, and you're looking for your first Breeders' Cup win. So is Edgar. You told me about an unusual saddling procedure you used with your filly today. Well, we do what you call a makeup, which we take the saddle, the pad, a uh, chamois channel, we put everything together, we prepare it before she comes out, and then we slap it right straight on her all in one package. And uh, she's the kind of filly that she's had a history of wanting to leap when you're putting everything together. So the less time we spend getting her ready, the better she does. And she, she saddled in the spinster better than ever in her life, and she did the same thing today. And for you fans of Saravra, Ken tells me he'll be back to the races soon. Yeah, we're about two or three weeks from coming back to the track, and we're all excited about his four-year-old campaign. And I know the Drakes are at home, or perhaps they're even here. I'm not sure, but um, I know everybody's looking forward to that one. He's a graduate of the University of Kentucky, and he'd like to get off the schneid today with his first Breeders' Cup win. 
Okay, Bob, thanks a lot. Jockey Mike Smith rides Azari, one of the favorites in today's distaff. Smith is one of two jockeys in this race whom we haven't seen at the Breeders' Cup in years. And for each of them, it's been a long and difficult journey back. This is the story of two men, two jockeys, each of whom reached the peak of his profession and then had to watch as it all slipped away. They arrive at the track every day ready to battle with all the stress and all the pressure that goes into being an elite jockey. They battle with the expectations. They battle with the scale. They battle with the hot box. And they battle with each other.
She was third in last year's distaff at a very big price, only got beat about a length and a half. And she is the richest Illinois bred filly in history, but she's pretty high strung. You see her kind of dancing around her pony there. They play classical music at her stall to keep her calm. Next in line is Summer Colony. Early this winter, she flew to California to become the only filly to have a beaten to have beaten Azari. And then she added five more stakes just for good measure. She's trained by Mark Hennig and runs for Ned Evans. Here's Farda Amiga. This Kentucky Oaks winner is surrounded by the most colorful and emotional team of owners you can imagine from Brazil. When she wins, it's fun. And this three-year-old filly runs well fresh. She won the Alabama after a three and a half month layoff and the public seems to be aware of that. She's seven to two. And here's the big mare, Azari. If there's such a thing as an alpha female, she's it. She's strong, she's aggressive, she wants to win. And she was named by her breeder, the late Alan Paulson, who is the leading Breeders' Cup breeder, by the way. Uh, he always named his horses after aviation checkpoints. That one's in Cars, Turkey. Here's Imperial Gesture. This is one of the three-year-olds from the East Coast, and she's very much improving. She beat older fillies last time out and used her speed going wire to wire to win the building. Now the task is tougher. She's going to have to do battle on the lead with Azari. Next is Mandy's Gold. Interesting filly. She formerly was a front-running sprinter, and she's changed her style completely. Now she relaxes off the pace in distance races, a technique she used to win the ruffian stakes. And next in line, we have Star. This is a California invader. She runs in the silks of movie theater owner George Krikoria. She's winless this year, but she's been unable to catch either Azari or Summer Colony. But she's flourished here this week, galloping boldly, and wears those blinkers there for the first time. And here's Take Charge Lady. This is a top-class filly from the East Coast. Fiercely competitive. She's finished first or second in 11 of her 12 starts, and she will be the one to test Azari today. She is owned by the select stable of Jerry and Fee Bach, who also raced the three-year-old Repent, and she's fresh off a of victory in the Spinster, which has been the stepping stone, Bob, for nine winners of the distance. Okay, Charles, here, a reminder for our viewers, you can log on to NBCSports.com for in-depth coverage of the Breeders' Cup, including an interactive feature on how to handicap the Classic, and you can take part in our online cyber capping of each race and match your picks against our own handicappers, Bob Newmeyer and Mike Battaglia. So, without further ado, let's uh, rejoin the odd couple and ask them who they like in the distaff. <laughs> well, I know who's Tony Randall in this group, that's for sure. <laughs> Azari could win Horse of the Year if she wins big and we have an upset in the Classic a little bit later on. And you like this filly today. Yeah, you know, I really do. Uh, Azari's going to be my pick. I noticed that she came out with front wraps today. The first time that this filly has ever raced with front wraps. I caught up with Laura Desaru on the way out and asked her about this. She says this is purely a precautionary measure because the track has been off. Now, the track has been upgraded to fast, but she says it's gritty. There's still a little moisture in it. And she just put the front wraps on as a precautionary measure. Now, Azari's won nine out of ten races. She's got speed. She doesn't need the lead to win. And what I really like about her is the fact that she's been carrying high weights in handicap races. Look at the weight she's been carrying. 25 in the Vanity, 26 in the Clement Hirsch. Last time out, 127 pounds. She was spotting the runner-up 12 pounds in that race, and she still won in hand. If she gets into a speed duel with Imperial Gesture, she could be beaten in here. But I think Mike Smith can rate her just off the pace, and uh, I think she looks good, especially right now at odds of 2-1. to one. I think an overlay. Take Charge Lady, probably the one to beat. Well, front wraps is never a positive sign, Mike. Uh, Take Charge Lady is my selection today. There she is. This is a three-year-old filly that's vying for the championship in her division, and this is the spinster stakes at Keeneland, and Edgar Prado skimming the rail and zooming by Bobby Frankel's nice three-year-old filly, you, in drawing off to an authoritative win at Keeneland. She should get a nice trip in this race, but it is stocked with horses who love two turn distant races. Look at these records. Summer Colony has won 9 of 11 around two turns. That's the distance of today's race. Azari, 7 of 8. Take Charge Lady, 7 of 9. Even the three-year-old filly, Farda Amiga, has won two out of three, Mike. This is deep. There's quality. There's depth. And uh, this is a terrific way to kick off our racing card today. There really is. And like you say, if Azari wins and wins, wins impressively and we get an upset in the Classic, she could be considered for Horse of the Year. Well, we have to remember, though, that no filly has ever been voted Horse of the Year without first beating males. 
We'll take a look now at the odds. The public seems to be warming up a little bit to Azari, which is more than most of us can say. She's now at two to one. They are still liking the three-year-old Take Charge Lady. And Farda Amiga has slipped down to four to one. Summer Colony, the only filly to have beaten Azari, still at seven to one. And Donna Barton Brothers is out on horseback amongst the fillies warming up. Let's see what she's got. Well, Charles, see, I checked with the track man, Javier Barajas, and uh, he said that the track is drying out very quick today. There's a nice breeze in the air. They've gone from muddy to good to fast in the first three races prior to the Breeders' Cup program, and the track looks like it's in good shape. I'd label it as wet fast. There's nothing dry to it out here, but it looks like everybody will have an honest chance to get footing of it. As for the distaff, just a beautiful bunch of fillies and mares. I can't wait to see them run, Charles. See. All right, Donna, thank you very much. And right now we're going to go back to Kenny Rice, wherever he may have wandered to. <laughs> Charles, yeah, I'm in the stands right now getting a good view of the action and taking a look at the long shot in this race, two item limit, the number one. She is the only Illinois bred that will run in a Breeders' Cup race today. And she's raced only one time here in Chicago, but has become a local favorite of sorts. She had a big win over this same track here at Arlington just six weeks ago. She was a little high strung as a two year old, so trainer Steve DeMauro and his staff decided she needed to relax more. In doing so, they started playing classical music for her. She particularly likes Mendelssohn. It's helped her relax in the stall, it's helped her relax when she gets to the track, and what they're hoping for is if it continues this way, if she is relaxed enough, even at 40 to 1, that perhaps today she will come out and run as boldly as if she were listening to Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. And uh, Steve DeMauro is here with me. Steve, you have a long shot in this race, but you're taking a shot based on the win that she had here, I imagine, about six weeks ago. Right. We just brought her here um, to run against the Illinois Breds, hopefully get a race under her belt on the racetrack that the Breeders' Cup was at. And if she performed as well as we were hoping, then we were going to stay here and run. Well, she certainly likes her music. Good luck to you. Maybe she'll like the track again. Thank you very much. Okay, Steve, tomorrow. Now let's go over to Bob Newmeyer. Kenny, certainly one of the fillies we have to watch in this race is this one, Imperial Gesture. Remember last year the Godolphin Phillies ran 1-2 in the Juvenile Phillies, Tempera and Imperial Gesture, and she has speed. She'll likely challenge for the lead early in this race, and she's ridden by one of the best in the business in Jerry Bailey. And in fact, Jerry Bailey going into today's Breeders' Cup is tied with Pat Day with 12 victories in the history of this event, so we'll be following Bailey's and Day's mounts today very, very closely. But again, the only knock on this filly, I suppose, is when we showed you earlier the two-turn records of the fillies. She has not had the greatest record around two turns. She runs beautifully at Belmont Park. She can use her speed down that long, long backstretch at a mile and a sixteenth and a mile and an eighth distances. And it will be very interesting to see if Imperial Gesture can use that speed and harness it well around the two turns here at Arlington Park. But as you see, she's very relaxed, has a veteran rider in Jerry Bailey, and should get what we like to call a good trip in this race today. Chelsea? Thank you, Bob. We're gonna take a look now at number two, Summer Colony. This is the older mare who's not getting a lot of attention. She is the one who went to California to beat Azari. And she is really a two-turn specialist. And I think the public has cooled off her a little bit because her last turn was around, a race was around one turn and she was beaten, so they, they jumped off her immediately. But if you go back to her race at Saratoga in the mile and a quarter personal ensign, she really ran a brilliant race and uh, is, is really may, maybe being overlooked a little bit here today. Her trainer, Mark Hennig, is really pretty high on her and she looks well. We'll take a look now at where they're gonna break very close to the turn. This is a mile and an eighth, this race. The Arlington Park track is a mile and an eighth, so the gate is positioned pretty close to the turn. In fact, it's only about 150 yards until they have to take that clubhouse turn. So a little tough on the outside horses. It's only eight, a field of eight, so it won't be so much a factor in this race as it will in the two juvenile races. Let's go back to Bob Newmeyer and see what he's got. I'm just looking at the odds board, uh, Charles C, and I see that Farda Amiga is getting some play as well, and why not? This is a filly that has surprised players in two races this year. Number one at Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Oaks under Chris McCarron, when she beat Take Charge Lady off the pace, and then a little bit later on in the Alabama at Saratoga. She loves to come from way out of it, so if this speed duel 
that could develop between the Aziris and the imperial gestures of the world develops, then Farda Amiga could be flying late along with Summer Colony. But again, another filly to look at. She's on the board at a square price at 9-2. to two. She hasn't raced lately, but a lot of horses in today's Breeders' Cup card have been taking the layoff approach. In other words, training up to the race rather than racing up to the event. And so we'll keep our eyes on Farda Amiga as the field of eight is slowly walking their way to the starting gate here on a chilly day at Arlington Park. Charleston? Well, Farda Amiga has chosen to take the layoff route. Azari, Lord DeSaru debated about whether to work her seriously or give her a race before bringing her here to the Breeders' Cup. She opted to give her a race, but it turned out to be a very, very easy race. As I said, she has just been dominating the West Coast Phillies, so it was just basically a paid workout. But she is here and fit and sound. The horses are starting to load into the gate, and we'll take it to Tom Durkin for the call. And there goes Summer Colony into post position number two here. Mandy's Gold moving into line. Farda Amiga taking her spot in post position number three with Pat Day aboard. She's expected to come from off the pace today, and here is Starrer sporting a new look today with her blinkers on. And Azari, the favorite, into post four. The final one into line here. Take charge, lady, in post position number eight, ready for the start of the distance. Azari wasting no time, and she bounces right out on the lead. Imperial Jester right there now to challenge her early as they move into the clubhouse turn and take charge. Lady is up close to the other pace. Farda Mega not far behind today. She's up closer than usual early, and she finds her way to the inside early beneath that day. She's running along in fourth. Mandy's Gold off the pace today in fifth. And then it's Summer Colony who gets a nudge there from Johnny Velasquez. She's six toward the inside, then star and two item limit, the last of them all. Azari through a quarter in 23 and 2 fifth seconds being pressed by Imperial Jester. Jerry Bailey puts her in the game early. It is Azari and Mike Smith. Mike Smith like a statue in the stirrups. Azari is just doing it very willingly here. And her opening half was a testing one though in 46 and 1 fifth seconds with Imperial Jester glued to her. Three lengths back and take charge lady is a stalking third. It's another three lengths now and Pat Day is wanting more from Farda Miga. There's seven lengths behind as they round the far turn here at Arlington Park. Around the far turn, it is still Azari leading the way. She's run three quarters in 109 and three. Sensational fractions here for Azari who comes to the top of the stretch with the lead a length and a half. Bailey is now asking a lot more from Imperial Gesture, but she is still second as the field turns for home. Take charge, Bailey is toiling on the inside.
and I was smiling from that point on. Mike, she's been amazing this year, but in this race, she went the three quarters in 109 and three, like she was galloping and drew away through the stretch. How's that feel? God, I, you know, I, I lost words to describe this filly after her third out. So that goes to tell you how much I really think of her. Right. I think she's the best filly I've ever ridden. Well, Mike, good luck to you and congratulations. Charles, see what a beautiful mare we laid eyes upon today. She is something special. She is extraordinary. This wonderful filly that Laura DeSaru calls Sugar Bear. Absolutely decimated all the best that we've got together in this country. Makes the ninth Breeders' Cup win for Mike Smith, the first Breeders' Cup win for Laura DeSaru, and a tremendous performance by a very special filly. There is Laura with Mike Paulson cheering on what was his father's silks. For the horse, strength is of prime importance. It guarantees his most precious asset, his incredible speed. Strength is the basis of his future, his offspring, for generations to come. When you're speaking of strength for generations, speak to someone who's in it for the long run. Strength. Bessemer Trust. Enhancing private wealth for generations. Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. Year after year, people you know and trust feed more and more of us. All for as little as seven cents of our food dollar. No other country has such a healthy diet or such variety in agriculture. So the next time you meet a farmer or rancher, say thanks to the growers of things we eat and the fiber we wear. The North American Farmer, putting food on our table. It takes experience, strong financial backing, and a record of success to get to the Breeders' Cup and to become the world's leading fractional aircraft ownership program. Net Jets all the benefits of private jet ownership and more at a fraction of the cost. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. By supporting NTRA charities and its affiliates, you help horses stay safe and healthy before, during, and after their racing careers. You help the people and the communities that are home to NTRA member tracks and farms. And you help Ronald McDonald House Charities worldwide. NTRA Charities, serving our community and yours. Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championship is brought to you by Bessemer Trust, enhancing private wealth for generations. By Napa Auto Care Car Centers, Napa, we keep America running. By Long John Silvers, this is seafood country. And by FedEx, need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx Express and FedEx Ground. And he's happy about that. Now let's go downstairs to the boys and get their point of view. Yes. Yes. Here we are at Arlington Park, and Mike Smith is just aboard the winner of the Breeders' Cup this time. There is Laura DeSaru, who had yet to saddle a horse in Breeders' Cup competition, and she has done it with Azari. Azari was routinely brilliant in victory today. Bob Neumeyer and Trevor Denman downstairs to go over it with us. 
Bell Town at the top of the telecast, we mentioned a couple of scenarios that could give Azeri Horse of the Year consideration. So far, so good. Oh, yeah. That performance that we've just seen there, I would say confidently she could have won the Classic later on this afternoon. I don't think any horse in the world could have beaten her today. Just impossible. And she looked like she still had a lot in her. Mike Smith just let her run along that last eighth of a mile. And then they got to the wire, and she cocked her ears up. She wanted to go around again. I think that was an absolutely devastating display. I think what impressed me about this run, Trevor, as we go to the Telestrator, very few horses run a faster second quarter than first. 23 and 2, then she put in a 22 and 4 second quarter. Very interesting was because she was getting pressure here from uh, Imperial Gesture in the blue. Now, very interesting here too, Bob. Look how far off the rail Mike Smith has taken Azeri. He had the option to drop down onto the rail, but he's at least five horses off that inside rail. So it's going to be very interesting to watch as the day progresses, especially in the sprint. Are the jockeys going to try to stay off the rail? You see even the guys in behind in mid-pack are three, four horses off the rail. Azeri had to be a good five, six off the rail. So that's going to be an interesting factor. And then look at this here. He's just shaking the reins at her. She pins her ears just a little here. She's running, but she's got such a beautiful momentum. Just look at the way she covers ground there. And I just love this last bit. Watch her hit the wire. And she literally will cock her ears asking a question. You know, do you want me to go around again? I think the only way you can describe this is poetry in motion. Really. And really no excuse for any of the other fillies that when mares that were in the race. Imperial gesture chased, got tied. So did Take Charge Lady. Farta Amiga kicked in a little bit for a second, yes. but it was all Azeri. Nobody's going to beat Azeri today. I think it was a very fair run race. The track looks to be playing very fair as well because Farta Amiga came from far back, so I don't think there's any speed bias. Just playing too good. That was Azeri. No one was going to beat her this afternoon. So the Azeri show here in the distaff. Chelsea? Well, and here's the Azeri payoff. At 9 to 5, she was the longest priced winning distaff favorite. Very generous price considering her record. She also ran the second fastest half mile in distaff his history. Mike Smith was also aboard the fastest half mile, which was aboard a Gina, who was also a Paulson horse. Very interesting. Farda Megan Imperial gesture rounded out. We'll go down to Mike Pataglia in the winner's circle. Thank you, Charleston. We've just crowned a champion, the first one here on Breeders' Cup Day, the champion filly, our mare, Azari, and just a scintillating performance this afternoon to make the trophy presentation. The Honorable William S. Ferry, she's the U.S. Ambassador to Great Britain, along with the President of Breeders' Cup Limited, D.G. Van Cleef. Michael, congratulations. What a tremendous filly. Great effort. Wonderful for Laura and wonderful for Mike. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Uh, wow, I'm uh, speechless. Uh, we knew she could do it, and uh, she proved it to the world today. There was a lot of uh, people that doubted her. Now, I, I don't think she has a doubter in the world. And I want to uh, give this tribute to my dad. Uh, it's all about him. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Laura, can you step over here? What a job of training this filly. She's now won 10 out of 11 races. I know it's very emotional for you all. This is your first Breeders' Cup horse. You've got to be thinking of Charlie Whittingham right now. You've got to be thinking of Mr. Paulson. That's just a great, great job. Congratulations. Yeah, Charlie's not here, and neither is Mr. P. And, and you know, it makes it a very emotional for us. And, you know, Mr. Farish was one of, one of the first persons I ever worked for in the horse business way back when, so this is very special for me. What I mean, this filly is just, she, you told me earlier at Keeneland that this might be the best horse you've ever seen in your life. Oh, she definitely is, without a doubt. Laura deserves the trophy. <laughs> great job. Mike Smith, come over here, Mike. Mike, what a great job. This is your first Breeders' Cup win since 1997. And you've, we've documented all the problems you had with the broken back. Uh, you didn't seem to have any problems today with Azari. <laughs> oh, she left the gate extremely well today. Actually, probably the best she's ever broke, right, Laura? I mean, she come out of the gate today just, I mean, like the first two or three jumps, she opened up a length, and uh, I was smiling pretty much around the, <laughs> the first turn from there on in. Uh, she was amazing. We got a chance to, to, to show her, show everybody that, that had any doubts uh, what she really was today. I think she proved it. Well, you know, sometimes they say a horse can steal a race on the lead. Here you are coming under the finish line, Mike. Look at you, pumping your hand there. You are just very ecstatic. And a lot of times they talk about a filly stealing a race. You don't steal a race when you go six furlongs and nine and change. You annihilate the field. Uh, she stole a lot of races. She's stolen races from dead last, uh, laying second, third, fourth, fifth, and on the lead several times. So, I mean, every time she runs, she steals them. Great job. Great job by everybody. And uh, as I said, the first champion crowned here this afternoon in Azari. Charlesy? Thank you, Mike. That's an emotional group there. And understandably so, as Azari makes a shambles of the Breeders' Cup distaff, and Laura De Saru becomes the 28th first-time Breeders' Cup trainer to win. All right, and that's the
the official order of finish, and now we will go to Bob Huff. Right there, you're right. All next right, to Charlie, the thanks very much. You know, the last filly to win Horse of the Year honors back in 1986, Ladies' Secret. Now with Azari's very impressive performance here in the Distaff, if later in the day, in the last race, if War Emblem does not win the Classic, it might open the door for Azari for Horse of the Year consideration. That's later. An exciting start to this 19th Breeders' Cup. One race in the books, seven more still to come, and as it turns out, not even open heart surgery can keep Tom Hammond completely away from Breeders' Cup Day. Tom tells us he's feeling much better, should be back to work soon, and to keep in practice, he has a look ahead at the rest of the card from his home in Kentucky. Thanks, Bob. I'm feeling good. The prognosis is good, though it is tough to think of being anyplace else but at the track with all of you today. I have been trying to stay positive, though, mostly by convincing myself all the money I'm saving by not being around Mike and Numi. I did think I could help the viewers a bit by identifying some of the storylines in each of the races. And in the next race, the juvenile fillies, how could I not root for trainer Shug McGahee, who earlier this year underwent a surprise bypass operation. From Storm His filly, Flag Storm Flag Flying, Flying shows why horse people put such stock in bloodlines. She has Breeders' Cup ribbon all over her and a diva's personality to boot. Arlington's excellent grass course is the setting for the mile and our first look at a real superstar, Rock of Gibraltar. Then the sprint, with my eyes on the old man, Kona Gold, in his record fifth appearance in the race, and the little filly, Extra Heat. Purchased for just $5,000, she's earned over two million and will be sold at auction next month for at least that. The filly and mare turf features the defending champion, Banks Hill, but it won't be easy to repeat. She had a rough trip in her prep race, has done a lot of shipping, has changed trainers, and likes the ground just so. A look at the juvenile really gets me excited about the 2003 Triple Crown races. Remember last year when Aiden O'Brien brought Johannesburg to win this race? It is
Channel 2 on your side. Channel 2 and the New York Lottery are giving you more chances to win in a brand new second chance lottery contest. 222 more chances to win. Send in any non-winning New York lottery ticket. Then watch Channel 2 News Daybreak from 5 to 7 a.m. to see if your name is announced. Call us within 22 minutes and win 222 Winter Wonderland instant game tickets and lunch for two from Tim Hortons. But you got to watch to win another Daybreak second chance lottery contest from the New York Lottery and Channel 2 on your side. What to do? Be a part of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus. Before Showtime, audience members join performers on the arena floor for a hands-on adventure. Log on to WGRZ.com for more information. What to do from Channel 2. Raise the band. to set your clocks back one hour for daylight savings time. Peaceful, serene, Arlington Park. Ironic that the perfect design for the future of thoroughbred racing was built only after disaster. The blaze began in the kitchen of the paddock room around 2 o'clock this morning. What began 20 hours ago at Arlington Park is tonight estimated to be a 100 This afternoon, some 150 firefighters fought the fire. Arlington Heights is one of 20 fire departments on the scene for 18 straight hours. By next year or in the not too distant future, maybe we'll have Arlington Park racing again. From the ashes, a racing renaissance, a place where the odds can be defied. the long shot horse that lived in this barn on these grounds and then became a household name. War Emblem is back home today, back where it all began. A walk goes around, just comes around, this is the sound, it's time to get down. War Emblem's ready to get down to the business of becoming Horse of the Year. And Bob Baffert knows how hungry he is. A hunger that comes yearly for the men and women who know what it means to be a part of the Breeders' Cup. Seven more chances to shine on the greatest day in American racing. That's what comes around now. Of course, part of the scene here at Arlington Park and the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships. We're getting set for our second race, the Juvenile Phillies, and Charlsey has a look at the current odds. Well, we have 11 Phillies, but most of the attention is centered on one Philly, as you see, Storm Flag Flying. If there's a legacy in thoroughbred racing, she's it, a granddaughter of the great personal ensign, a daughter of my flag, and there she is at even money, a little attention going to two of Bob Baffert, Santa Catarina, and Composure. And right now, we'll find Kenny Rice down in the paddock. Thank you, Charles. I'm with Suge McGahee. She certainly does everything right on the track, but she freezes just a little bit in the paddock, so she is going out first to not be part of the post parade, which has become her norm, Suge. Well, it has been, Kenny. You know, just if we keep her from getting stopped, you know, like with the paddock procedures, it seems to help, and, you know, that way we're not going to interfere with anybody else's uh, chances too if she were to do something a little bit silly but she was great today we talked about uh, we talked about my flag and personal ensign certainly on her damn side you said you think she might be faster well she is I think she's pretty precocious at this time of the year she's uh, quick I hope she'll be up in the race early today you know it looks like the track's pretty quick and uh, there is some speed so but I hope she'll break get a good clean break and uh, you know we'll be laying up there with them okay good luck Suge well one thing she certainly doesn't like is company on the track when she's running or in the post parade as well. Let's now go over to Mike Battaglia. Thanks, Kenny. And when you talk about two-year-olds, you're always talking about Bob Baffert. And uh, Storm Flag Flying is the big favorite.
favorite in this race, but uh, Bob's got the numbers on his side. You saddled three horses. I watched you give instructions to three different jocks, Bob. Did you ever give the wrong guy the wrong instruction? Well, I've given uh, the wrong instructions to a lot of times, you know, but uh, you know, I try to tell them a little something, but uh, they're on their own. When the gate comes open, they have to decide what they want to do. Today, I just told uh, Mike Smith, you know, put her into the race a little bit early. Uh, track's pretty. I think you got to get into it early, and uh, I just hope she doesn't get in a speed duel with, uh, I think it's the five horse. Right. You know, the because I don't think she'll be around very long. I just hope, you know, he doesn't go with her. Well, you chased Storm Flag flying last time out uh, at Belmont Park. Coming here now to this racetrack, you think that might favor a little bit more of the sweeping turns here? Well, they had sweeping turns at Belmont, too, but that was one turn. Well, I think, uh, as you saw in the first race, I think the two turns makes a difference. Uh, that Philly uh, that ran, I think she ended up third. Uh, she, you know, that second turn, uh, it, it, it does confuse them a little bit, and I think that uh, hopefully that uh, these two turns, they, they got them. Thank you, Bob. They're ready. Good luck. Charlie, the juvenile Phillies will be run at a mile and an eighth longer than it's ever been run before. Why the change and how will it affect these two-year-olds? Well, Bob, it's because of the configuration of the racetrack here at Arlington. In order to run a flat mile, they couldn't do it. It would have them be in the middle of the turn. So they had to back it up either to um, um, a mile, mile and an eighth or go back to the flat mile distance, which would have been run out of the chute. A mile and a 16th was the original distance. So in order to do that, they just decided they polled the trainers and found that they were all pretty willing to go for the mile and an eighth distance. And so again, like with the distaff, they're going to have that short run to the first turn of only 150 yards. But here they are. They're ready to go. And we will see how it turns out for these young fillies. Here's Santa Catarina, the first of Bob Baffert's trio. She races for Bob and Beverly Lewis, who for all their triple crown success, have yet to win a Breeders' Cup in their own right, although they did own a part of Timber Country a few years ago. Ivana Venelot was scratched on Wednesday morning with a fever, so that brings us back to a second of Bob Baffert's fillies, Composure, the Oak Leaf winner. She's also in the Bob and Beverly Lewis Silks, and they were inspired by the green and gold of their alma mater, the University of Oregon. Oregon. And she should really relish this mile and an eighth distance with her pedigree. Storm flag flying, of course, left the paddock early. There you see her galloping around the turn. She's temperamental and unpredictable, but she's been authoritative in all of her races. All three victories were with the utmost of ease. And as Shook McGee said, she seems to be really on her best behavior today. And that is not good news for the rest of the field. Next, we have Humorous Lady, who has won four of her five starts, all of them in sprints. But she, too, is trying two turns for the first time, as is Storm Flag Flying, and remains a question mark at the distance. Next in line will be Ruby's Reception. This little bitty filly was second in the Alcibiades. She's owned by five buddies from Henderson, Kentucky, and her trainer says she might be itty-bitty, but she's all heart. She was a real good second out in Kentucky. She's going to come running late. She's got lots of late, late speed. Blinkers on this Philly Sea Jewel for the first time, wearing, wearing these blinkers. She races for Ann Moss, an environmentalist, and Jerome Moss, who used to claim horses back with Herb Albert in the 70s. And the Mosses have horses with lots of trainers, but John Sheriff's trade this one. Here's Buffy the Centerfold, the much-discussed Buffy the Centerfold. She finished second to Composure in the Oak Leaf after leading early on. She's bred for the distance because she's back a Pody, who was the juvenile winner back in 1986. Her trainer, Mel Studi, is two for five in the Breeders' Cup. And the last of the Bob Baffert trio is Atlantic Ocean, and she cost $1.9 million, a record price for a two-year-old in training. She has shown some flashes, but thus far she has not really lived up to her billing. And she's owned, of course, by the Thoroughbred Corporation, as you recognize those colors for more emblem. Here's Westerly Breeze. Uh, a little moisture in the track is going to suit her fine because she won the Alcibiades on a very sloppy track down at Keeneland. But that outside post is going to complicate things for her. That short run we mentioned into the first turn, post 10, isn't going to help. And on the far, far outside is Appleby Gardens, another multi-million dollar baby. She finished 13 lengths behind Storm Flag Flying last time out, but they, the connections feel that the distance will really suit her, so she gets one more try, but she's 50 to 1. 
And once again, a reminder, you can log on to NBCSports.com for in-depth coverage of the Breeders' Cup, and you can also be part of our online cyber capping of each race, match your picks against our own handicappers, and check out a special interactive feature on how to handicap the Breeders' Cup Classic. Mike Battaglia is one for one, having picked the Zeri and the Distaff. Let's rejoin him along with Bob Newmeyer. Thanks, Bob. And uh, we've got an odds-on favorite right now on the board, the 4-5 to five Storm flag flying, the regally bred filly. Uh, she's 3-for-3, three three, comes off a huge win in the Frizette. And, Bob, if somebody beats her, it's going to take a big, big effort. Yeah, Mike, there's an old saying in racing, breed the best to the best and hope for the best. And that is the case with Storm flag flying. You cannot find a better bred horse anywhere on this planet. This is Storm flag flying, a daughter of Stormcat. The dam is my flag who won the juvenile fillies. Her dam was personal ensign, the sensational champion of the 80s. And here is the long striding filly burying Santa Catarina in the Frisette Stakes at Belmont Park. Look at her just toy with the opposition and Santa Catarina is billed as one of the competitors today in the Bob Baffert and Bob and Beverly Lewis stable. That's right, and really it was no contest, as you said, in the Frisette, and she should love the mile and an eighth. Uh, the race today, a mile and an eighth course, the two-year-old's going that distance for the first time. I think that will work in her favor, but, you know, you're going to have to beat the Baffert Phillies. He's got three of them in here, and by the way, I was talking to Baffert after he sent the jocks out. He says, oh, I forgot to tell Mike Smith, don't get hooked up in a speed duel with that five horse. He said, tell Donna to pass that along to Mike <laughs> Smith. So, so, Donna, if you can hear me right now he wants you to pass along to Mike Smith don't get caught up in a speed duel with humorous lady <laughs> all right thanks gentlemen let's see what the uh, cyber cappers are thinking well 39 percent backing storm flag flying big gap to composure and then C jewel I wonder how many uh, votes online Buffy the centerfold was able to gather not in the top three we know that well <laughs> And there's a look at composure. The Bob Baffert filly, who is second in the odd standings right now. Bob Baffert is 0 for 17 in the Breeders' Cup since Silver Bullet Day won this very race back in 1998. We'll be back with lots more Breeders' Cup very shortly. I spent every day in salt water. Great for my body. Tough on my hair. My solution? All new VO5 milks. Shampoos and conditioners with vitamin A and soy milk protein. They build back the shine and make my hair look and feel incredible. Try strawberries and cream, creamy fresh peaches, and pina colada. They'll leave your hair looking fresh and fabulous. If VO5 milks can make my hair look this good, imagine what it can do for yours. Enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. Centuries of breeding, endless attention and education, countless days of training. Now distilled to a single moment in time and a single goal. Performance. Performance. Made possible by many skilled people spanning generations. Performance. Bessemer Trust, enhancing private wealth for generations. There's something of Ireland in all of us. The music, the poetry, the warmth of that Emerald Isle where my mother was born. And the soft words of my mother's songs and the soft mists keep calling me back. There's never been a better time to visit. Come with me to Ireland. One week vacation from $499, including airfare, accommodation, and rental car. For your free travel kit, call 1-800-SHAMROCK or visit shamrock.org. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. Sunday at noon Eastern on NBC. NASCAR's in Atlanta for the Napa 500. Last March, Tony Stewart dominated his way to victory lane. Now, as he returns to NASCAR's fastest track to continue his quest for his first championship, can he hold his lead over rookie sensation Jimmy Johnson? Sunday, noon Eastern, NBC NASCAR. Okay, okay. 
Welcome back to Arlington Park. Let's see if Storm Flag Flying can do what Azeri did in the distaff, and that is win as the prohibitive favorite. Do you know the Breeders' Cup is for every man, not just the big stables like the Phippses and Bob and Beverly Lewis and the Thoroughbred Corp. There's the story of the little guy as well, and that's Ruby's reception. One day after the terrorist bombings of September 11th, the sales pavilion at Keeneland was almost empty, except for a guy named Larry Jones, a trainer from Kentucky, who bought this filly for just $12,000 for a syndicate of horse players at Ellis Park. They all ponied up $6,000 a piece, bought some claimers, didn't have much luck. But then Larry bought this filly on September 12th at Keeneland for $12,000. It's his first Breeders' Cup try. It is this rider, Terry Thompson's first Breeders' Cup try. And so it's the little guy against the big guy here in the juvenile fillies. Donna? Yeah, yeah, so I'm right here. Uh, you know, I heard the message from Mike Battaglia about relaying the message from uh, Baffert to Mike Smith, but I decided that Mike Smith didn't get any instructions from Baffert to win the first race. I'll just leave him be. The Phillies are beginning to load into the gate. Storm flag flying, the prohibitive favorite with the call of the race. We go back to Tom Durkin. And the final group taking their place in the starting gate here, located just about 110 or 20 yards or so from the first turn here at Arlington. There goes the uh, compact Ruby's reception. And on the outside, Appleby Gardens in post position number 10. Ready for the start for the juvenile Phillies. And Humorous lady who bricks on top, but she's quickly sent to the front and over to the rail. Composure's right there and behind her, and down on the inside, Santa Catarina. Buffy the centerfold, four wide. The big favorite, Storm Flag Flying, is three off the rail. Westerly Breeze is taking sixth position. Sea Jewel rides the rails in seventh in the early going here. Ruby's reception has asked for more run in the early going. About to be passed by Atlantic Ocean is at the back of the pack today. And Appleby Gardens just settles into an easy gallop. The pace here is swift. And a sprinter's out in front. It's Humorous Lady, and she's out there by two and a half lengths. Santa Catarina and Storm Flag Flying sitting chilly beneath Johnny Velasquez in third position. Buffy the center pole being nudged along in fourth. Composure moving sweetly after a half in 46 and one-fifth seconds. Humorous Lady continues to take the field down the backstretch run. Santa Catarina moves to confront her now as they move past the half-mile pole. And Velasquez says go with Storm Flag flying their third, Buffy the center pole is fourth, and Composure is ready to roll, just in behind the lead now, she's only two and a half lengths from her stable mate who's now leading, it's Santa Catarina the leader, Storm Flag flying is full out, but she's still second as they approach the top of the stretch, Composure looms back in third position, See Jewel on the inside is now fourth, Buffy the center pole is softened up in fifth and universe lady as the field turns for home. She's running to, she let the big go. She's running to let the big go. 
So I'm gonna have to stay with her, you know, make sure she, she keep her mind and running. She got a little bit surprised in the quarter pole when the other horse came to her. Then when I hit her left hand, she came in front, in front right away. What about you when the other horse passed you through the stretch? Did you have an anxious moment or did you know you had no, plenty of horse? I actually, I was, I was kind of just waiting for her. Come on, mommy, come on, let's go. Because she was just kind of playing around though, you know. And then she saw the other horse and finally she got going though, you know. So I know I had it, but she was, I didn't know if she, she was going to give it to me though, you know. Right. I got to say hi to my family. My father's very sick. Hopefully he feels better. He feel better. Daddy, que te sienta mejor. So quiero mucho cuidas and bye. I'm sure everybody understood all that. Charles C, Charles C, back to you. Congratulations. What, what we understood is we've just seen another coronation of a champion. What a race this was. Composure had taken the lead and looked as though she was going to be drawing away here. Storm flag flying had not looked like a winner around the turn, then went to the lead. Composure passes her. Storm flag flying on the inside, looking hopelessly beat, and look at her come back. As Tom Durkin said, it's personal ensign all over again. What an exciting race. John Velasquez wins his third Breeders' Cup. Bob Baffert, I'm sure, thought he had this one. There he is cheering her on, and then the bad news is Storm Flag Flying stops it, but Suge McGahee sees this is not good for his heart surgery. He sees that he did pull it out. Seafood Country, and this is Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Long John's famous batter dip fish, plus irresistible crunchy shrimp, plus batter dip shrimp and more. Get our biggest variety platter ever for only $6.99, or our biggest combo ever just $3.99. It's so much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into Seafood Country. I printed and collated the color report that won the big account and got us into a larger office. And this is the respect I get. I need a hug. Toshiba copiers make you look good. Year after year, people you know and trust feed more and more of us. All for as little as seven cents of our food dollar. No other country has such a healthy diet or such variety in agriculture. So the next time you meet a farmer or rancher, say thanks to the growers of things we eat and the fiber we wear. The North American farmer putting food on our table. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers. He uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now, as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. Financial security doesn't happen overnight. It's a matter of working hard to grow wealth and taking care over time to protect it. At Prudential Financial, we're experts in growing and protecting wealth. It's why 15 million people worldwide rely on us for financial solutions, for sound advice and planning, for help in meeting a lifetime of goals. Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your wealth. circle at Arlington Park in Chicago where Storm Flag Flying has thrilled 40,000 plus here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Quite unlike the first winner today, Azari, who won all by herself in a very easy victory, this was a game and determined run. Let's go downstairs now with Kenny Rice and Mike Smith. Thank you, Tom Durkin. In the final furlong of this race, it looked like Mike Smith, who won the distaff on Azari, was going to make it two for two with composure here in the juvenile Phillies. Mike, you had actually taken the lead on Storm Flag Flying. Did you think you had it by then? Yeah, but I, I really couldn't tell how much horse Johnny had. She was kind of floundering. His horse was on the laying second there, so I knew she was going to have another gear left. She was looking around too much, so when I did move, I, I tried to just blow by her and get enough distance in between us, and hopefully I could hold her off. But my hat's off to, to them, to, to, 
Storm Spikes flying, she's just an incredible mare. Right here, she's going to find something else that I just didn't have today. It was a great performance for both. You had about a half a length on her right there when she shoots by. I did, and, and like I said, I, any any other horse, you, you win the race. You know, it just I ran into a champion. Well, congratulations. It was a good ride. You've got one down and a runner-up as well. So a win and a second place for Mike so far. we got four more to go. Let's get four, four more. more to go. Thank you very much, Mike Smith. Now let's go over to Trevor and Bob. Well, once again, Trevor, it looked like a cleanly run race. The only question, Smith maybe a little bit in tight turning for home and then shuffled out three wide to make the run. Wound up being a gut check between the two courageous fillies. Tremendous. I think it just came down to heart in the end. Composure ran her heart out, but that other filly just kept grinding away on the inside. 16th ball, I thought Mike Smith had a double, really. It looked that way. And a very cleanly run race. You know, they went fast early on, so they were going to get tired early. Now you can see here's Composure on the outside, and then the red cap there we have a Storm Flag flying. Now right here, as Mike Smith said, it looks like he's put her away right there you'd have to put your money on composure right now but you can see John Velasquez not rough on that filly but just keeps after her and she pins her ears back and right here it's just all about who's got the bigger heart and the bigger heart today belonged to Storm Flag flying very game win and maybe it's where the pedigree kicks in huh? oh that pedigree Storm kicks Cat in for sure my flag and unbelievable pedigree you were just talking about that before the race and that really kicked in in the end and that was just sheer class terrific stretch run Charlesy when they have to call back to mom and daddy, it's nice to have that kind of depth. And so Storm Flag Flying becomes the ninth winning favorite in the juvenile fillies. The sixth odds on. Pays 360. Not much return, but what a show she put on for, a, for an inexpensive ticket. All right. Mike Battaglia is down in the winner's circle. And it's a little bit of bedlam here in the winner's circle. We've just crowned another champion. Storm Flag Flying secures her berth as the two-year-old Philly champion. Owner Denny Phipps, trainer Suge McGahey, John Velasquez. Uh, Velasquez just rode a perfect race. To my left, Ms. Donna Crow. She's the vice president of Long John Silvers, along with Mike Talbot. And the star of Crossing Jordan, Jerry O'Connell. They're going to make the presentation. On behalf of Long John Silvers and our 15,000 team members, it is our pleasure to sponsor and reward this trophy to the winner of the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And Jerry, I know you want to say something too as you bring that trophy across. Ogden is a personal friend, so I just want to uh, congratulate you guys. You got a uh, great horse. I'm sure you'll be getting used to the winner's circle with this one. And Denny, this filly has just royally bred. Uh, she ran to her breeding, looked like she was beat at about the eighth pole, but showed just tons and tons of heart. She did, she did. And you know, it's amazing to have her grand dam and her dam uh, also be winners here. It's extraordinary what Shug has done with all three of them. It, it really is amazing. The first time ever, three generations of Breeders' Cup winners. That's right. And Shug, we know you've had the problems with the uh, heart surgery, and we hope you know you're coming back. Uh, by the way, you're looking good. Tom Hammond sends his best to you. You've just done an exceptional job. This filly is really something special. Uh, well, she is something special, uh, Mike. You know, and I got to thank my people for uh, at the barn for helping us as much as they did, and they did a great job. But uh, you know, it was a lot of fun today seeing her run this way. Uh, you know, her grandmother and her mother, and now her. It's something pretty extraordinary and uh, something we're proud of. It makes up a bit for easy going. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> it does. And did you think at the eighth pole when Composure went by her like that, think you were in trouble? I thought we were in trouble when she came up there. I mean, I, I felt like when she made the lead that maybe she might try to pull herself up with all the activities and stuff and just kind of she's you watch her. She's a lot of ears and looking around and she did. But as soon as that horse went by her, I think that helped us. And, you know, then she came on and was, you know, kind of a handy winner. I know it's a long way away, but uh, she's the type of filly could handle the boys in the derby. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Long way, away. Long, long way away. Great job, John Velasco. Great job on this. Uh, you're the one that was on her. You didn't think she was beat at the eighth ball. No, I didn't think so. No. She's so green, and today she ran like she ran uh, for, for, for her first time. Uh, she was looking around and everything, having a little hard time in the backside, you know, to get a hold of the track and kind of looking at everywhere. And I'm just kind of encouraging just to keep her mind in, in business there. And got to the quarter pole and she opened up over like three quarter length. I mean, she went to a slow down. The other horse kind of caught, caught up with her, pulled, pulled up like half half a length in front of her, and she right away she knew like I have to run. So she came back and won. Great job, great job, guys! Another champion, Charlesy. Back to you. It looks like we've got a theme going here, Mike. Storm flag flying. She is the winner. Composure was lapped right on her. The, it was really the main story with these top two fillies. Ruby's reception, great story, but not her day to day. All right, we're going to turn our attention to the turf now, and the first turf race of the day is the mile, and you know what? We're going to keep
keep right on with this theme because this race too is expected to be another coronation. The European sensation Rock of Gibraltar is making his American debut. We've got a full field of 14, but the attention right now is all on the rock. He's even money. So stay with us and see how he fares. What are claustrophobics doing in an elevator? Facing their fears, but you're missing the point. Someone's joining us. On our way to ship important packages, a small business owner gets on the elevator with him. But instead of panicking, her survival instincts kick in. Stop, drop, and roll? <sighs> yeah, that's it. That's what I'd do. Well, she remains calm, knowing FedEx has fast, reliable service with a money-back guarantee, proving there was nothing to fear but fear itself. I'm afraid of heights. This isn't about you. OK. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. When I was uh, 13, my best friend and his parents uh, took me to the racetrack. I bought my first horse when I was 17. It's very rare that you'll make an investment and you'll know in a minute and 12 seconds uh, if, if you made the right decision or the wrong decision. That moment of excitement is uh, just a strong pull. And once again, when you combine that with the beauty of the animal, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming. I can't think of one high in the business world that compares to winning horse races. If you want to play the greatest game, become a thoroughbred owner.
Welcome to our New York studio in the Sun America Sports Desk. We'll send you back to the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships in just a moment. First, some NBA action. The preseason concluded last night with a not so friendly meeting between the Sacramento Kings and the LA Lakers. Now, there was no love lost when they met in the Western Conference Finals last season. And after what happened last night, it is safe to say these two teams still don't like each other. Five minutes in, Rick Fox with the elbow to Doug Christie. Fox then hits Christie with the open hand. Christie responds with the left to the jaw, causing players from both teams to spill onto the court. Both players ejected, but watch as Christie heads for the locker room. He gets through the tunnel, only to be greeted by Fox, who puts him in a headlock. The two disappear under the stands. Christie is then seen throwing punches at Fox. Security tries to separate the two while other Kings players get involved. No injuries were reported. NBA officials are looking at the videotape and should be ruling soon on possible suspensions for Fox and Christie. In addition, all the Kings left their bench, as did Shaquille O'Neal, so it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out. Now to a much more passive sport, golf, the European Tour, and third round action from the Madrid Open. Ireland's Padraig Harrington came into today tied for the lead here on the par 5 fourth. He putts for an eagle in a two-stroke lead, and that put him at minus 13. But from the middle of the pack comes Adam Scott of Australia. That was his approach on the par 4 16th, and he gets the nice bounce. He birdied the hole to go up by two, but back comes Harrington putting for a birdie on 16 to tie Scott, and it's good Scott went on to bogey 18. So heading into tomorrow's final round of play, Harrington leads by one shot after birdies on two of the last three holes. In NASCAR, four races remain and just 177 points separate the top five drivers in the Winston Cup points chase. Tomorrow, points leader Tony Stewart will start on the pole at the Napa 500 after qualifying was rained out last night. We'll bring you all the action starting at noon Eastern time. And there's more on NASCAR at NBCSports.com. Check out Wally Dollenbach's in-depth preview of tomorrow's race from the Atlanta Motor Speedway, including his top five drivers to watch. It's all at NBCSports.com. And we'll update you on the college football scoreboard a little later on. Up next, the Breeders' Cup Mile. We'll return to Arlington Park right after these messages from your local station. This has been the Sun America NBC Sports Desk. Sun America, the retirement specialist. We've watched them from the beginning and shared all of their joy. I promise you my laughter and my tears as long as we both shall live. Now, Niles faces a personal battle that neither he or his family ever saw coming. Hey, what's going on? Frasier, this November on NBC. Do your old oven mitts burn your hands and stain easily? Solution Starfrit, the new silicone glove for all your kitchen and barbecue needs. Its ultra-resistant silicone protects your hands from intense heat, frying oil spatters, barbecue burns, dry intense heat, as well as boiling water and even direct contact with your stove's heating elements. The non-slip cushion surface offers a safe and secure grip. The Starfrit glove is hygienic, odorless, stain resistant, and dishwasher safe. For all your kitchen and barbecue needs, the Starfrit Silicone Series. Smart Starfrit. Hi, I'm Pat Gambino. If you're looking for a new or used car, now is the time. Interest rates have never been lower. And with our huge discounts, you can end up with a payment lower than you ever thought possible. And in most cases, we can even refinance your negative equity. Here's John. Get more car for your money at Lockport's Gambino Ford. Drive home an 01 Stratus or Tracker, just $159 a month. And remember, we're open seven days a week and weeknights till 9. Call 625-8181 or come on down. It's a terrifying nightmare of warehouse inventory at both FWS stores. So on Tuesday, for 11 dreadfully delightful hours, you can shop, shop, shop for all kinds of treasures for your home at prices to die for. Creepy carpeting starting at $1.77 a square yard. Deadly delicious fabrics from 77 cents a yard. Evil temptations will abound in every department. Only 11 ectoplasmic hours to turn the FWS nightmare into your sweet dream. WGRZ.com, your link to news and features that matter to you. The Breeders' Cup worry there's a FedEx for that is brought to you by NetJets. Everything else is just a plane. By John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. By Toshiba, don't copy, lead. And by Guinness Drought Stout, enjoyed responsibly the world over. Welcome back to 
Arlington Park. If you want to talk about money and power in the world of thoroughbred racing, you're talking about the Coolmore Stud in Ireland and the owners John and Susan Magner and their proud possession, Rock of Gibraltar, ready to go to post at four to five odds in this Breeders' Cup mile. Mr. Magner, who breeds, sells, and buys the most expensive bloodstock on the planet, offered a piece of the rock, if you will, to Sir Alex Ferguson, who's the manager of the Manchester United soccer team, and Rock of Gibraltar is their proud possession. They toyed with running this horse in the classic, he's just that good, but they decided to keep him on his favorite surface, turf, his favorite distance, the mile. And if Rock of Gibraltar should lose today in this race, that loud noise you'll hear is about well, three million dollars of pick six tickets that will be ripped up simultaneously if he comes under the wire not first because most people have singled this champion as their favorite in the pick six today which starts with this race in the breeders cup at arlington park kenny thanks bob certainly rock of gibraltar the star here but one that people are taking a look at is the four horse good journey coming off an impressive win in the adult mile he is a perfect four for a three for three this season and with me is trainer wally delazi wally you have decided this year to give him some time off he had about seven months off some tender feet you wanted to bring him to the midwest and the east to run him what you thought would be soft for turf and it's worked for you exactly this is my plan i had a plan here to be in this race and then it worked out ideally and uh, anyway, so far, uh, everything is on a go, and uh, everything has been working really as I had planned. And that's a luck out when you can plan anything in the horse racing game. But I was really, uh, really happy the way he ran in that, at the Atto Mile, and I'm going to be real happy, I hope, this afternoon. I liked what you asked me the other day. I see you on the backside, and you said, have you seen Rock of Gibraltar? I said, yeah. You said, does he have four legs? I said, yes. You said, just like my horse. So you're ready to take on the Rock. I'm ready. I'm ready. And he's going to have to go right along. Uh, you know, there's a little question mark now about the surface, and I'm not sure how he's going to handle that. But he handled it well on the citation out there in California. So uh, maybe we'll get lucky today. Okay, good luck to you, Wally DeLazzi. Thank you very much. Wally, who, of course, won the distaff here a few years back with Jewel Princess. And Good Journey, coming into this race, has raced 11 times at a mile. Only once has been worse than third. He's three for three this year. Charlesy? All right, there's Rocket Gibraltar, four to five. And we'll be back with the running of the mile in just a minute. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers, he uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. Is briquette French for little brick? Yeah. Anyway, listen up. A barbecue grill manufacturer introduces a new model so big, it puts all other ones to shame. Even the really shiny ones? Yeah, even the really shiny ones. Keep up. They rely on FedEx Ground to get affordable nationwide B2B delivery with a money-back guarantee. And backyard gourmets get the thriller of the griller. Must be a real knockout. It's the greatest. The undisputed heavyweight broiler of the world. All right, that's enough. Thanksgiving weekend. Churchill Downs. Hollywood Park. Calder Racecourse, 3.5 million in stakes, a lot more reasons to give thanks, Thanksgiving weekend, only on CDSN, bet on it. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Guinness Draft in a bottle. The Golden Boy, Travis Pastrana, defending Gravity Games champion, undefeated in his career. Don't miss a bit of high-flying action as he looks to break new ground and raise the bar at the Freestyle Motocross Finals. The Gravity Games, Sunday at 4.30 Eastern on NBC. All right, and there are the odds. 
for the Net Jets Breeders' Cup Mile at Rock of Gibraltar is still the even money favorite. Zilzal was from Europe. He was even money in 1989, went down to a defeat, which was very shocking. And then Good Journey is still getting plenty of attention at 9 to 2. He is, of course, the American horse. Bobby Frankel's Beat Hollow is at 6 to 1. And they are on the track. We'll take a look at the field. It is a full field of 14 for the mile, and we lead off with Forbidden Apple. He's a veteran seven-year-old making his third Breeders' Cup start. He was narrowly beaten in last year's mile, and he's always right there. And there's none prettier than this big fellow. Next in line is Beat Hollow, the winner of the Arlington Million right here this summer. And many have written him off after his loss to Lanseer last time out, but Bobby Franklin and Jerry Bailey say they let him go to the lead too soon, and that won't happen today. Next in line is Medici's. The Chanel manufacturers, Alain and Gerard Wertheimer, a third generation of a great racing family. Their Cotisham won the Breeders' Cup turf and Horse of the Year in 93. He's a Group 3 winner in France for his trainer, Cricket Head, who also won the Arc de Triomphe. And here's Good Journey. No horse on the grounds has looked sharper or trained better than the Addo Mile winner, Good Journey. And he'll need it all to beat the Rocket Gibraltar today. Another foreign invader from France is Dome Driver. He's owned by another great racing dynasty, the Niarcos family, whose great Philly Miesque won the mile in both 87 and 88. And Dome Driver's very consistent, won a group two last time out. Green Fee is a long shot. He's next in line. He came from absolutely last to nab Forbidden Apple in the Kelso, a race in which he was a last minute entry. But he'll need clear sailing in this bulky field. He's owned in, uh, by Roberta and Luana Lowe of Springfield, Missouri. Another from the Frankel factory is Alda Baron, also owned by the Niarcos family. And he's a younger half brother to Good Journey. He switches back to the turf today after five consecutive fast closing finishes on the dirt. And here are those red, white, and blue silks of the Paulson Living Trust one more time. This time it's trained by Bill Mott. All five of Del Mar shows, uh, I'm sorry, all five of Bill Mott's Breeders' Cup victories were for the late Alan Paulson. The very first was with the Theatrical, who is the sire of Del Mar's show. Boston Common is emblematic of the philosophy that Richard, that earned Richard Englander the outstanding owner Eclipse Award last year. He claimed this cult first time out as a two-year-old for $50,000. Now he's a multiple stakes winner. And next is Rocket Gibraltar. There he is, looking a picture with quite an entourage there, men on both sides of his head. He has not lost a race since the New York Yankees were world champions. He reeled off an unprecedented seven straight grade one wins. Next in line is a colt named Touch of the Blues, and he's had a Touch of the Blues. He's been bedeviled all year with traffic problems. He needs to overcome racing luck today. He's got a similar running style as Neil Drysdale's mile winner, War Champs. Same trainer. The only filly in the mile is the cleverly named Dress to Thil Thrill, something I guess Buffy the Centerfold was not. And she has won group races in both England and Ireland. Dermot well trains this filly for Walter Hefner's Moiglair stud. They are bastions of Irish racing. Next in line is Landseer. This is also from the Aidan O'Brien stable. His victory in the Shadwell Mile over Beat Hollow is a sneak preview of the strength of the European contingent. He'd been overshadowed by the rock, but Aidan O'Brien says he wouldn't be surprised if he pulls an upset. And last but not least, from that dastardly outside post is Nuclear Debate. The seven-year-old warrior was champion sprinter in Italy and England before being imported last year by William and Donna Herrick of Rancho Santa Fe, California. Trainer Daryl Vienna says he handles all kinds of going. That's the feel for the Atom Mile. And again, Charles, you can log on to NBCSports.com to take part in our online cyber capping. That's NBCSports.com. If your lucky numbers are four and three, you would have had the first two exactives. It's been a chalky day so far, and Mike Pataglia has gone with the chalk twice. Let's see what he's thinking now as he rejoins Bob Newmeyer. You're right, Bob. Two favorites, two winners, and at four to five in a 14-horse field, just goes to show how the public is in love with Rocker Gibraltar in this race. Well, how can you not be in love with this horse? This horse is a superstar in Europe. This horse has won seven straight Group 1 races over five different courses in three different countries. Look at him in his last race. Here he is with Mick Canan coming up on the outside. He's got the red colors, the white hat. This is Banks Hill next to him. Banks Hill won the Philly Mare Turf last year. Look at Mick Canan. He's just handwriting. Never even thinks about taking the whip out. This horse is not only 
only been winning, he's been winning impressively. The margin of victory doesn't tell the story on that one. This horse has just been much, much the best. I'd be shocked to see him get beat uh, this afternoon, to be quite honest with you, Bob. I just think he's the, the definite class in this race. Well, it is racing and anything's possible. The ground is soft, that could be an issue. The post 10 is not the greatest. There's the potential of shuffling, bumping in the first turn in particular. Mick Canan will try to get a nice position maybe in the second flight. If he can tuck in a couple of lengths, that would be helpful as well. But Europeans have been known to go down in flames in this race as big favorites before. In 1988, warning as the 9 to 5 chalk, 11th. Zilzal, even money, 6th. Arazi, remember him? Three to two, couldn't find him with a telescope. What about Mark of Esteem? That's the one. Well, it was interesting that year because at six to five, our certain European expert, yeah. John McCreerick, said that if that horse didn't win, he would not leave Canada. Oh, you <laughs> are wicked on, on NBC. You remind me of all these things. No, but we really are hopeful of Rock of Gibraltar. The stable is back in, bang in form. A horse called um, Bram Baru has just gone one at Doncaster in England, a group one, 11 to eight favorites. So the stable's bang in form, and it's owned by Sir Alex Ferguson, who is the manager of Manchester, Manchester United, the top soccer club, who've won seven of the last nine premierships. Now, imagine if Mike Dicker or Dan Reeves have won seven of the last nine Super Bowls, what that would do for racing. So, Rock lose Gibraltar is the question. Can the Rock lose? Well, it's a terrible price you'll be. They're asking five to four price. on the board. We don't care about it's the price. Can, can he lose? lose? He can lose, but he's going to win, but the price <laughs> is terrible. The Americans are giving nothing away on the price. <laughs> I like his hat this year. I like his Very hat. Oh, Charles, back to you. <laughs> I think that the boys have finally met their match, and that was refreshing. <laughs> Only the second time in the history of the Breeders' Cup that the turf hasn't been firm or good. We'll be back. For the horse, strength is of prime importance. It guarantees his most precious asset, his incredible speed. Strength is the basis of his future, his offspring, for generations to come. When you're speaking of strength for generations, speak to someone who's in it for the long run. Strength. Bessemer Trust. Enhancing private wealth for generations. The four has the top trainer stats in the race. Jeremy, you've got to be kidding. It's the five all the way. Five's got no chance. Seven's got the best by a speed figure. Bobby, I love the two. The Tomlinson number said it'll love the track. Hey, you guys ready to order yet? Sure, I'm starting. No, 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 no. Come back later. Just come back after that. Horse racing, even the experts can't agree on much, except for one thing. Bobby, come on, I'm really hungry. Shut up and read the form. How do you find getting sick when you read in a car? Well, you don't read. Anything else? Mm. Good. This custom hydraulic system gains international appeal after a showcase at an auto show. Center stage? It was in the back, but had good foot traffic anyway. The mechanic uses FedEx Global Trade Manager to help find and print shipping documents, estimate duties and taxes, and they're on the international scene before you can say later hose. Later hose. Too late. That was fast. Not fast enough. Later hose. Well, he's really taken us to new levels. He's brought customer service to a whole new level. I think we were somewhere in here. I think he's sort of raised the bar. Somewhere in there, between there. You know what he's all about? He's all about this, not about that. What's that gonna get you? Oh, he deserves this award. There's no doubt about it. <laughs>
Well, Charles, see, I am here on the turf course. I talked to Javier Barajas, as I mentioned earlier. He's the track superintendent. He said the track's listed as yield, yielding the turf course. He does not expect for that to change. There's not much wind. There's absolutely no sun. So yielding looks like it's going to be the course for the day. And as I'm out here, it really is in good shape. For a turf course that's been raced over all summer, they have the capabilities to move the rail further in or further out. And the strip that the horses are going to run over today is very fair, and it's not cut up at all. And I think it's a really happy medium with the yielding turf course between the Americans and the Europeans. It makes for a very even uh, playing field for everyone, Charles. All right, we'll take it over to Bob Newmeyer right now. Another interesting note about The Rock. You know, next week, the residents of Gibraltar are going to have a referendum as to whether they remain under the jurisdiction of Britain or Spain. Well, those siding with Britain have adopted this horse, the Rock of Gibraltar, as their kind of poster boy, a rallying cry, if you will. So if he wins today, maybe that'll push the votes for Britain over the top in next week's election. All right, and here is a look at how this course is configured. The turf course here at Arlington is one mile, so it's just an even one turn around. Arlington was the first track to bank the turn turns on a turf course. And they'll be getting around that first turn any minute, so we'll go to Tom Durkin for the call. And they do not have far to run into that first turn. It's just about 100 yards. And with a gate full of 14 and a short run into a first turn, where position means absolutely everything when they, by the time they hit the finish line, it could spell for trouble as they move into that first turn. The jockeys are going to try to save all the ground they can on that first turn. Horses that drew well here, Forbidden Apple, who did draw on the inside, normally not such a great place to be, but in this particular position, for this particular kind of horse, Forbidden Apple likes to go to the front. He drew very well. Beat Hollow is right alongside him. He has a bit of an advantage as far as the post position goes. Just a couple of horses behind the gate here as we wait for the Breeders' Cup mile. Moving into post position, number 13 is Landseer with Edgar Prado aboard. Going into the uh, middle portion of the starting gate, post position number seven, there is Aldebaran. And the final horse to move in way on that outside post, number 14, Nuclear Debate. Ready for the start of the mile. Uh, and he 
appears to be in some distress here as he is being attended to by several of the uh, authorities here. But under the wire first, there is Dome Driver with uh, French jockey Terry Thurley, Lancier, Lancier, his jockey there, Edgar Prado, down on the ground. Now as they turn for home, Lancier, you'll see those caps, those uh, yellow and orange uh, uh, striped taps. It looked like he went bad behind here, and that horse to his outside was Nuclear Debate, and I believe that was Touch of the Blues, who was just in behind. Uh, but it was no effect to the horse that won the race, who had an absolutely flawless journey there in Dome Driver. Again, the uh, attendance to uh, Edgar Prado. You always like to see jockeys being able to have mobility after a race because so many of their uh, injuries uh, can be uh, paralyzing, in fact. But he's, uh, he's clear of mind, it appears. He's up and moving about, and that's always a good sign as the medical technicians uh, take, care, uh, take care of him. Donna Brothers is uh, out on course, and Donna. I'm here with Terry uh, Toulier. Congratulations, Terry. This is the ho horse's first trip in the United States, your first Breeders' Cup mount. Tell me about your race. Hey, I'm sorry, uh, I speak very bad English, but uh, I know uh, my horse is a very good finish. He likes uh, the race speed, and today, very strong for finish. All right, well, Terry says he speaks bad English, but I could hear him well enough to say that the horse finished very well. Uh, did. Uh, Terry, congratulations. Charles, see, we'll head back to you, and I hope everyone's all right. Unfortunately, Donna, I think in any language, Lancier is in serious trouble. He's clearly fractured his leg. We'll have a report when we come back from this commercial. Have you ever dreamed about owning a private jet? Why dream? NetJet's fractional aircraft ownership makes it possible and affordable. The best aircraft, the most experience, and the financial resources to ensure the highest standards in safety, security, and reliability. More of the world's most successful individuals and companies choose NetJets. Why not you? NetJets. Everything else is just a plane. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. Year after year, people you know and trust feed more and more of us. All for as little as seven cents of our food dollar. No other country has such a healthy diet or such variety in agriculture. So the next time you meet a farmer or rancher, say thanks to the growers of things we eat and the fiber we wear. The North American Farmer, putting food on our table. There's something of Ireland in all of us. The music, the poetry, the warmth of that Emerald Isle where my mother was born. And the soft words of my mother's songs and the soft mists keep calling me back. There's never been a better time to visit. Come with me to Ireland. One week vacation from $499, including airfare, accommodation, and rental car. For your free travel kit, call 1-800-SHAMROCK or visit shamrock.org. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. Sunday at noon Eastern on NBC. NASCAR's in Atlanta for the Napa 500. Last March, Tony Stewart dominated his way to victory lane. Now, as he returns to NASCAR's fastest track to continue his quest for his first championship, can he hold his lead over rookie sensation Jimmy Johnson? Sunday, noon Eastern, NBC NASCAR. We're back at Arlington Park where you see jockey Edgar Prado being returned from the turf course. He was involved in a spill aboard Landseer. He appears to be, to all intents and purposes, all right. Unfortunately, we cannot tell you the same of Landseer. We showed you the spill, the fall. To show you any further would be inappropriate. But Landseer, we're waiting for the official vet report. But it is a tragic end for Landseer. We'll go to Bob Newmeyer. I'm walking with Edgar Prado, who was involved with the spill. Edgar, first of all, your condition right now? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks, guy. No, it could be a lot worse because I was close to the leaders and my horse was making a nice move. Unfortunately, this thing happened, and uh, that's the bad side of the sport, you know. Um, I'm glad everybody else make okay. You know? 
and then just feels terrible for the horse, you know. He's, he was a nice horse and uh, all the connections from Mr. Tabor and Mr. O'Brien. You said you had problems. Exactly can you explain what happened to the horse in the collision that forced the injury? Well, it happened so quick, you know. All what I hear was a big uh, crack right there. I don't know if I um, step on a hole or... I, don't, I can't tell because it happened so quick and uh, I tried to pull him up as soon as I came back. Uh, like I said, he wasn't full wrong at the time, you know. And uh, he looked pretty good to win the race. So, I said, it's kind of hard to explain what really happened because it happened so fast. So you hit the ground, but you're okay. I'm fine. You know. Edgar Prado is okay. Let's go to Kenny Rice. All right, Bob, I'm with Dr. Larry Bramlage, who is uh, always with us at the Breeders' Cup. And Dr. Bramlage, you have the latest on Lanseer. Well, he broke his uh, cannon bone right below the carpus, or the knee in the middle of the leg when he was coming around the turn. And then he tried to catch the rest of the horses. So th this is a very grave injury. This is uh, not one that's likely to be repaired because of the amount of damage that he did. At this moment, I believe he is in the ambulance now and is, yes, is he, proceeding off the track? Yes, he's, he's being evaluated in the ambulance, but we're pretty afraid about this one, that, that, that this might be a very bad injury. Thank you for your time, Doctor. I know you still have some work to do. Let's go back now to Charlesy. Thank you, Kenny. And there you see the horse ambulance on the turf course, tending to the ill-fated Landseer. His stablemate, Rock of Gibraltar, uh, obviously finished unplaced. He missed the break. He was very wide on the first turn. Seems to have lost all chance, but here's the winner. Dome Driver, the third biggest upset in mile history. Last Tycoon at 35 to 1. Opening verse at 26 to 1. Are the only ones who paid more than Dome Driver at $54. Rocket Gibraltar did get up to be second. Good journey. Finished third. Let's go to Trevor Denman. Well, I think the whole essence of this race here really came down to the difference in the style of racing. You know, in England, it's an absolute crime to run wide on the turn. And unfortunately uh, for Rocket Gibraltar, I think he was too far back today. The stretches here in America are so short, you have to get them rolling earlier than that. And unfortunately, the rider, you know, if he did that in England, it would have been classed a good ride because he didn't lose ground. But going wide like that um, and being so far back in a field of 14 on the American track. So let's go and take a look at the start right now. Here he is. He does the right thing at the start. He's right at the back here, Rocket Gibraltar. This is him in the red colors at the back. That's no big deal. He's drawn 10. He purposely came out a little slowly, the rider, because he wanted to duck over onto the rail again. He did not want to go wide. We have to emphasize that, that going wide in Europe is a, is a crime, whereas in American riders, because of the difference in the configuration of the track, they don't mind going wide. It's a matter of getting first run. Now we'll go to the top of the stretch here, and you can see now he's unwinding, but he's dead last there. Now look at him take off. He absolutely passes a horse with each and every stride, but of course the winner, uh, Dome Driver, has got first run on him. He's going to come into your picture desk now, and look at Rocket Gibraltar going by grade one horses like they standing still. There's Forbidden Apple. That's a good racehorse, and he's just eating him up here. But as we said, uh, Dome Driver had first run. Given another 50 yards, Rocket Gibraltar would have won. It's just unfortunate on the afternoon. You hate to place too much blame on jockey Mick Kinane. Uh, he did well at the start, but really, in American terms, he should have let him go a little early and gone wide. Don't worry about losing ground. If he'd gone wide, I'm sure Rocket Gibraltar would have come home on top. But that's racing luck. Dome Driver, a very creditable winner on the afternoon. So, got to give full credit um, to the rider and trainer of Dome Driver. They did everything right. Very game run as well from Good Journey. He ran his heart out, ran well in third. And another game run from Forbidden Apple. That guy just doesn't know how to run a bad race, a good fourth. But undoubtedly, an unlucky loser on the afternoon, Rocket Gibraltar. to talk to Mick Canan, of course, who rode Rock of Gibraltar, but uh, to say that he was very dejected is an understatement. Of course, you just heard uh, Trevor talk about the trip that he got, finished second on a horse that was probably the best, and you have to remember that the horse that went down, this is another one of Aiden O'Brien's horses, and uh, Mick Canan has been up on him on a couple of occasions, so it was quite understandable that he would not talk, but uh, he was just not in the mood and uh, couldn't get much comment from him. Charlesy? Out this way. Out this way. Un understandably upset, and of course, the winner, Dome Driver, trained by Pascal Barre, who uh, at one point was assistant to Francois Boutin, the trainer of Arazi, so who also trained the horses for the Niarcos family, so it's a small circle there. Everyone comes back together. Dome Driver, the winner of the mile. of Dome Driver here in just 
a moment and have the presentation. The Rock of Gibraltar closed so fast, I didn't even see him get up to be second. I thought he finished off the board, but a great performance under tough circumstances. Now we'll go down to Mike Battaglia and the presentation. And down here in the winner's circle, Maria Yarkos and Pascal Berry, they have not seen the race. They were stuck in the elevator. They were trying to watch the race on the big screen, but to make the presentation, uh, We've got Rich Santulli, and uh, Rich is the chairman of Net Jets. He's uh, no stranger to good horse himself. He's owned a couple of good ones, safely kept in Banshee Breeze. Rich, if you can get their attention. <laughs> Mrs. Niakos, it's a great pleasure and privilege to present to you this great race, great ride, great training job. Congratulations. This horse probably just ran the best race of his career, held off Rock of Gibraltar. Of course, we know that Rock of Gibraltar had a bad trip, but your horse still held off the odds on favor. You have to be very proud of him. Pascal Berry, the trainer. Oh, of course, we are very proud of him. He has, he has a very good number in the stalls. So Kerry rode a perfect race. The race went very fast, and he was blocked on the rail. And when, the, um, when he gets um, when he gets the passage, the horse accelerated very well. He, he loves this kind of race. And uh, Terry, I know that uh, this horse, like I said, he probably ran the best race of his career. You were down along the inside. Did you even know that a spill had occurred in this race? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 before the race, I have a good, good, good number in the stable and a good start. And uh, I wait, wait, wait in the, in the last race. Good finish. He's very good, a very good horse, and uh, he likes the very speed of the race. All right, well, Dome Driver does what a lot of people thought was impossible. Here is the finish. Here's the finish, Pascal. And here's your horse on the inside, Dome Driver, a driving finish. Here comes Rock of Gibraltar up on the outside, too little, too late. Uh, and Maya finished short with good journey, too. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Congratulations, Dome Driver springs the upset, beating Rock of Gibraltar here in the Net Jets Mile. Charlesy. Okay, Mike, the first upset of the day. It's Dome Driver, and what an upset he is. Paying $54 and down through the rest of the field with Aldebaran and Bobby Frankel's two finishing off the board. Right now, we'll go down to Kenny Rice for a report. Thank you, Charles. See, it is the highs and the lows, uh, the extremes in this business that uh, can make it so exhilarating and at the same time can break your heart. And that has been the case certainly with the long shot that we've seen win here in Dome Driver. But we now have received confirmation from the American Association of Equine Practitioners here trackside, headed up by Dr. Larry Bramlage, whom you heard from just a few minutes ago, that Lanceer had to be humanely destroyed. He had a fractured leg as he was coming into the turn, was swept out wide. He fractured his leg and as competitive thoroughbreds are wont to do, he continued to try to run that uh, obviously worsened the situation. He was taken off the track in an ambulance and Lanceer now has been humanely destroyed. Charlesy? what the great columnist Red Smith once called the harrowing uncertainty of the turf. We'll be back at Arlington Park after this. NBC Wednesday, the final showdown for the White House. Game on, boyfriend. Let's go. The one fight. Tired of partisan politics. He must win. How are we going to do it? Give me 10 after that. I'll drop out of the race right now. Game on. Oh, my God. This is the one to watch. All new West Wing, NBC Wednesday. Play it safe this Halloween. Join Channel 2 on your side for the gallery of treats to benefit kids escaping drugs. For a dollar donation, fill your Halloween bag with all kinds of goodies. The gallery of treats, Wednesday, October 30th. See you there. <laughs> Channel 2 on your side presents the New York Lottery Educator of the Week. This week's Educator of the Week is a math teacher that always has the right formula. Donald Kakowski of Frontier High School has a love for a subject that has inspired his students to strive for excellence, some to even follow in his footsteps. Donald teaches his students that math isn't the only thing that's universal. The Educator of the Week is brought to you by the New York Lottery, helping educate New York's leaders of tomorrow. What to do? Be a part of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus. Before showtime, audience members join performers on the arena floor for a hands-on adventure. Log on to WGRZ.com for more information. What to do from Channel 2. Channel 2 reminds you to set your clocks back one hour for daylight savings time. Number one show, Law & Order Criminal Intent, is all new. A mother is killed. Mommy. A war criminal is suspect. A screaming butcher of Tiananmen Square. Can he track down a murderer the whole world can't find? Don't you worry. All new Law & Order Criminal Intent, NBC. 
Fantasy Sunday. The 19th Breeders' Cup began in heartwarming style. Mike Smith returned to glory, while Laura Desaru in her first Breeders' Cup struck Peter. Smith tried to remain undefeated in the juvenile fillies, but Storm Flag Flying had too much heart, and Shug McGahey found himself back in the winner's circle. In the mile, Rock of Gibraltar got rolling too late, while Dome Driver went from long shot to champion. Big upset. Next, eight-year-old Kona Gold races in a record fifth sprint. Then we'll learn more about Desaru, the trainer who was once known as one of Charlie's angels. We'll see if Vindication becomes Bob Baffert's Derby hopeful in the juvenile. And the classic War Emblem's final race. Will he add another magic moment to his storied season? Or will his challengers ruin his homecoming? Racing's greatest day continues. And we're back live at Arlington Park. The sprint is next. And here are the odds, and unlike our first three races, this race does not really have a heavy, overwhelming favorite, but it's a wonderful field, a hard race to handicap, lots of early speed. There's extra heat, the wonderful filly. She's five to one. Bonapaw, four to one. Kona Gold, the old man, he is at six to one. Orientate was the morning line favorite, and he's a lukewarm at four to one. Good handicapping race. This race is historically known to be very volatile. It's a roughly run race. They're all out from the gate. It's three quarters of a mile, and there are no holes barred. They don't put on any brakes here. You're looking at George Chavez, who's the rider of Touch Tone. And right now, we're going to go down to Kenny Rice. Thank you, Charlesy. Kona Gold will set a record when he goes to the post. He will become the first horse to race in five Breeders' Cups. All those have been in the sprint. Keep it in perspective in this competitive field today, back in 98 when Kona Gold first run in the Breeders' Cup. Five of the horses he's running against today were born that year. Three others weren't even born, and two others were yearlings. Trainer Bruce Headley told me earlier that Kona Gold basically takes care of himself. That's why he's still going strong at the age of eight. He is the winner, of course, of the 2000 Breeders' Cup. And here's Bruce Headley now, who is uh, going to work on Kona Gold getting ready to uh, put the saddle cloth on. Bruce, he looks great today. All systems go for him? He's ready to go, baby. All right, I know you gotta get that on. He looks like a pro. He's done this several times, so there's no worry about him getting ready. It's quite a moment. Five times is quite a deal. You said earlier, Bruce, that he basically takes care of himself. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, just look how he's standing here. He, don't care, he doesn't have a care in the world. He could be on the beach somewhere in Del Mar. <laughs> Well, he keeps coming back. He's, he's uh, for Bob Costas, the baseball fan that you are, he's like Hoyt Wilhelm, except he's also got a, a fastball to go along with the knuckleball. Uh, Bruce Headley and Kona Gold, they just keep going strong. Bob? You know, I'm trying to figure out exactly what 49, and I believe that's how old Hoyt Wilhelm was when he last pitched, pitched in the major leagues. What does that equate to in horsey years? I know it's I know it's one to seven in dog years. Now, you see, I've, I've come in, I'm sitting in Hammond's seat, and I've raised a question no one can answer, and I should just get up and leave. Well, you're right. I'll give, it, I'll give you this. I'm right. You I should get trying, up and leave. Or? You sure stumped me. I have no idea what horse to human years are, but by any standards, Kona If you don't know, no one knows. Well, wouldn't it? No, nice well, thing for you to say to me. I'll make it up. Let's call it five years for every human year. But at this rate, Kona Gold is still the old man of the field. And the will not be racing at age 10, so. You never know. You never know. Bruce Headley is a wizard. He can do lots of things with horses. But there's a couple of six-year-olds in here, and one of them is a horse called Bonapaw. And he has got one single trainer who's got one single horse in his barn, Norman Miller. He calls himself a personalized trainer. And he is the horse's groom. He gallops him, he hot walks him, he does everything himself, including giving him a one hour massage before Bonapaw goes to the track. Now there's nothing unusual about holistic, non-invasive therapy on the racetrack, acupuncture, laser treatments, and so on. But what is unusual is that Norman Miller took the time to go to massage therapy school so he could learn how to do this just for Bonapaw. And he's a factor, Bonapaw. He's got lots of speed and he's a tough horse. He's got a winning race over this Arlington track. Meanwhile, let's go to Bob Newmeyer. 
Well, thank you. He's won more races, twice as many, in fact, than any other trainer in Breeders' Cup history, 16. He's won twice as much money as any trainer in Breeders' Cup history, $18 million. His name is D. Wayne Lucas, and he is here with two horses in today's sprint race. The more fancied of the horses, number 10, Orientate. He's coming off a big win at Saratoga in the Forgo. Hasn't raced since then. And Day Trader, number 13, is a speedball. He'll try to break from the outside with Pat Day. Let's see if we can get a word with uh, Wayne as soon as his horse comes by. And Wayne Lucas has been synonymous with the Breeders' Cup over the years as he's tightening the girth around Day Trader. He'll have to break from the extreme outside today. Pat Day will try to break sharply and then get a position into the first turn and deal with the other speed in the race. And uh, Wayne Lucas, your thoughts on today's sprint? Well, you know, these things get hot up front. They, they really do. And uh, when you put all of them in different regions of the country together, they're used to, you know, contending with one fast horse. Now you're going to get five or six. So it's hard to tell just what will happen. But I think we're versatile enough to maybe, you know, make a judgment. We've got two great riders. you got Jerry Bailey and Orientate. He's the big horse right now. He hasn't raced in Saratoga. How come? Well, we ran him four times in about ten weeks. And... Uh, we thought that uh, he runs well fresh, and we just thought going into this we wanted to be fresh. If we'd have picked out another one, that would have really put a lot of tax on him, and I just think it was better for us to wait. Handicap the race for us. Who do you like? Well, I, you got a, you got an interesting race when you got Bonapai who's run over the racetrack and obviously has an affinity for it, and then you got our horse that's off a of four, you know, race win streak, and, uh, and, of course, extra heat is always around there, and she's going to be, you know, very, very tough to outrun. But I... I think that it'll uh, it'll depend on who gets the trip here today because there are about five or six in here that you have great respect for. The most successful trainer in Breeders' Cup history, Dean Wayne Lucas. Mike? Here, here with Norm Miller, who uh, Charles has just said, this is Norm's only horse. He trains this horse. He hot walks this horse. He massages this horse. You do everything with this horse, Norm. And this horse is a, an oddity in racing. He just won his first grade one race ever at age six. Yes, and we're tickled to death about that. We're excited to be here. We feel we're winners just to be here in this company, in this competition. And uh, we hope for a good outcome for us. We know we're again against all the champions, and uh, we hope we come out on top. And I'm not going to be surprised if, not surprised if we win it. And you've done a great job with him, Norm Miller. Thanks, Norm. Charlesy. Thank you, Mike. Well, certainly Bonapole will be part of the pace scenario, and so will this horse, number one, Thunderello. He's got sharp early speed, and he's got that inside post position, so you can count on him being a big part of what are surely going to be some very fast fractions. He's owned by Charles Natty, a uh, corporate lawyer who, whose father used to own harness horses. And here, here is Kalugan Queen. She's named for her owner's hometown in the Philippines, and she has dethroned the boys twice already this year. The six-year-old mare is stablemate to Kona Gold, and they'll both be coming from off the pace and closing late. Next in line is the aptly named Disturbing the Peace. He is owned by, in part actually, by NYPD Blues creator David Milch and his wife Rita. He's won six straight, but none of those races were quite this tough, but they were confident enough to supplement him for $90,000. Here's a three-year-old filly, Carson Hollow. She's virtually unbeaten. Her only losing race was a head bob in the tightest photo finish you'd ever want to see. And now she meets males and older horses for the first time. It'll be tough for her. Here's Touchtone, Iowa Derby winner. He is. He won. Uh, he ran point given to a half a length in the Haskell last year. And now he shortens up for the sprint. And that's the same route that was taken by the victorious Gulch in 1988. Ran long as a three-year-old and then shortened up it as an older horse. Here's Extra Heat, a little bitty filly with the great big heart. She just wins and wins. $5,000 bargain. She's won over 2 million, 24, 31 starts. And she only lost last year's sprint by a half a length. She's got lots of early speed, too, and she can shake them off. There's no quit in her. Wake at Noon is next in line. He's expected to be named Canada's champion sprinter. His trainer, Abraham Petrian, is a native of Guyana who originally studied fashion design but no wins for this one outside his native Canada. Here's Bonapau, we just talked about him. He was a $6,500 yearling who has now earned over a million dollars for twin brothers James and Dennis Richard. 10% of that goes to the Children's Hospital in New Orleans, and he just seems to keep getting better as he gets older. 
Speaking of older, here's Kona Gold, the eight-year-old veteran who becomes, as we've mentioned, the first horse ever to make five starts in the Breeders' Cup. And the pace scenario really sets up well for him to come from off the pace and make him the first horse ever to repeat in the sprint. And here is Orientate. He is the 136th horse Wayne Lucas has run in a Breeders' Cup race. He's tried him all kinds of races, short, long, turf, dirt, but found that sprinting is, is his forte, and he's unbeaten at six or six and a half furlongs. Here's Crafty CT, another horse who chased Point Given last year over a distance of ground. But now he's finding his best stride sprinting, and he was second to, uh, actually second to point given in the Santa Anita Derby. That's how good he was going along, but he seems to be better sprinting. Got an unfortunate post position, number 11. And outside of him is swept overboard the Met Mile winner. He's owned by Paul Redham, who is a founder of Ditech.com. And he was tra trained by Craig Delassi, who is the youngest ever to win a Breeders' Cup uh, with re-raise. Seems to need his last race, though, after a long layoff. He should be sharper today. And last but not least is Day Trader, starter 137 for Lucas. Three-year-old chase the Philly extra heat to no avail in the Phoenix, and he gets a bad post for a horse with speed. Owner Overbrook Farm has won three Breeders' Cup races. And that is the field for the sprint. Now we'll go down to our handicappers and see what they think. Thank you, Charlie. And the sprint is always one of the toughest races on the card to handicap. You really need racing luck. And a race that's all, only six furlongs, if you get in any trouble, very hard to overcome that trouble at the distance of six furlongs. And Bob, I've got it down to eight in here. <laughs> Eight, huh? Yeah, eight out of the third third. I gotta be honest, I've been studying this race for over three weeks. <laughs> I mean burning the midnight oil, analyzing, dissecting. Yeah, yeah. Right now I'm looking for a little inspiration. for Mick Jagger and Keith Richards and Paul McCartney and Tina Turner. It's good enough for me. There's nothing wrong with being old. <laughs> and Kona Gold is eight years old. And what a horse this is. This will be his fifth Breeders' Cup start. That is a record. If he wins today, he'll be the oldest Breeders' Cup horse ever to win at age eight. And that's my pick because I'm getting a little gray up in the temples <laughs> as well. So I'm identifying with this horse a little bit, and that's why I'm picking Kona Gold. Talk about gray, look at that. But you know what? I hate to go against the gold. I love the Stones. I love McCartney, and I love Kona Gold. <laughs> but lesson. I know it. But I, you know what? I think that this race is really going to be won by a horse that comes flying at the end. I think the pace is going to be torrid. There you see swept overboard. I think he's the legitimate late runner in this race. Look at these horses that want to go to the front. Thunderella from the inside. Carson Hollow, a three year old filly that's never been headed extra heat she's never been a worse than first after a half mile and orientate Kalukan queen disturbing the peace bonapal all those horses want to be close to the lead and here comes swept overboard i think that if this horse gets a good trip his race in the met mile this year was as strong if not stronger than any horse ran all year i know it was at a flat mile six furlongs maybe a little short throw out the race in the ancient title he wasn't ready i think he'll be flying today is my top pick but extra heat is an amazing filly you oh. can't overlook her orientate just five or six of them that could really get the job done it's always a fun race here in the breeders cup the sprint let's go back to bob all right, we know what Numi and Mike think. Here's what the cyber cappers say. Kona Gold, but not by as large a margin as you might have guessed. Extra heat with 18% of the backers and orientate at 13%, Charlesy. Well, I have to agree with the cyber, our handicappers, Bob and Mike. I've spent a lot of time looking at this race, trying to figure out what's going to happen here. That's extra heat. She is a confirmed front runner. She loves to be on the lead. She wins all her races that way. And last year in the Breeders' Cup Sprint, Extra Heat and Squirtle Squirt were the two that hooked it up. And I said, you know, they, they just have to fold. They, those two can't go that fast and keep going, but they did. So never, ever count this little filly out. She's all heart. And we will see who gets the lead and who gets the victory when we come back. What's cooking? How about Chicken Mrs. Dash style? chicken breasts in a mixture of parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, and Mrs. Dash original blend. Saute in olive oil, add fresh lemon juice, and serve over pasta. Mrs. Dash can season any dish without any salt. 
onion, pepper, parsley, basil. Mrs. Dash is a garden of herbs and spices. And with nine flavors, you can shake up dinner every night. Why salt when you can season with Mrs. Dash? Centuries of breeding, endless attention and education, countless days of training. Now distilled to a single moment in time and a single goal. Performance. Performance. Made possible by many skilled people spanning generations. Performance. Bessemer Trust. Enhancing private wealth for generations. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. Is it hot in here? It's a steam room. And once again, you veered off course. A doctor's illegible handwriting causes the warehouse to ship otoscopes instead of stethoscopes. That will cause a misdiagnosis. Or a really weird chest exam. Mm. But the doctor logs on to FedEx Insight, spots the order disorder while it's still en route. He has the right parts reship stat, and a potential shipping shenanigan gets a FedEx inoculation. I thought a shenanigan was a good thing. No, that's a hullabaloo. Kind of like a brouhaha? Sure. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers, he uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now, as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. We are back at Arlington Park where the sprint is loading. It's the least formful. Only four favorites have won. It's time for the call. Let's go to Tom Durkin. And the favorite will be number 10, Orientate 5 to 2, reads the tote board here. There is one of the Phillies in the race, Carson Hollow. Should be a long price here at 18 to 1. And there is the uh, very easy to identify swept overboard. He'll be coming from the back of the pack, and he'll be running at a blistering pace today. There's Touchtone, one of the horses that'll be on the other end of the, spectrum, of the spectrum near the front. And there is Extra Heat, who led this race uh, until the very end last year, finishing second, beaten only a half length. There's a big long shot in Wake at Noon, who's 70 to 1 as he strides into the starting gate here. And the final horse to move into line, Day Trader in post 13, ready for the 2002. Breeders' Cup sprint. And they're off. Day Trader broke on top of the far outside. Orientate gets off to a good start, too. Extra heat is right there. Long shot. Thunder Bellow down toward the inside. And there's Carson Hollow. And Carson Hollow has come away to lead this speedy field with Thunder Bellow right there with their extra heat is third. And Orientate gets a good spot early. He's running in fourth. Day Trader on the far outside fifth. Crafty CT is racing sixth. And then it's touchstone between horses seven. Kalukin Queen is eight toward the inside. Three lengths disturbing the peace. Under a ride is now ninth. Then Bonaparte. Kona Gold way near the back. He's 12 lengths from front running Thunderella. And swept overboard. Has only one horse beaten. That is long shot. Wake and noon. A wild first quarter of 21 and two fifth seconds. And it's Thunderella at 35 to one. Turning for home with the lead. On the outside. Here comes the favorite orientate. And he's driving to Thunderella. Championship. 
orientate, get a half in 43 and 4 fifth seconds, an absolutely wild half mile here over a track labeled as fast at Arlington this afternoon. Jerry Bailey was aboard for the victory. And uh, we'll go down to Donna Martin, who is with, once again, Gerald Dale Bailey. Jerry Bailey, congratulations. Your record 13th win in the Breeders' Cup. You won the sprint last year. What's the secret? Fast horse. Good good post helps, too. Uh, this post is a very advantageous for six furlongs. Now, you said this horse was quick the first jump away from there, so you thought you'd have some advantage, but he didn't make the lead. He didn't make the lead. He was quick the first jump, but I decided not to send him off his feet to see how it played out. There was plenty of speed. Probably worked to my advantage. You'd won the last two races on him. Did you think he was the kind of horse who could win the sprint? It's a tough race to win. It is, but I had no doubts this horse is the best sprinter. The only thing that worried me was the track, because it's kind of in between. It's not sloppy, it's not fast. All right, Jerry, congratulations. Charles, see, last year, Jerry Bailey got Frankel off the duck. Now he gets Bob and Beverly Lewis off the duck. Back to you. That's right, Donna. It's the first Breeders' Cup for Bob and Beverly Lewis, owned entirely in their own right. A big day for them. Big day for Jerry Bailey. Third, number 13 for him. He pulls ahead now, Pat Day. 17 wins for Wayne Lucas, and here's how he did it. Thunderello, the long shot who had broken for number one post, had controlled all the fractions, had drugged them along, but Orientate had stalked, moved to him at the head of the stretch, and gamely got up in the last few strides. No end to the good racing here today at Arlington. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers, he uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now, as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. Watching my horse win the Kentucky Derby was a special moment for me. As a supporter of Ronald McDonald House Charities, I've seen many other special moments. Houses like this one provide a home away from home for the families of seriously ill children who are being treated at nearby hospitals. As a thoroughbred owner, I'm proud that the NTRA Charities has created a national program to support Ronald McDonald Houses and to help kids all across America. Year after year, people you know and trust feed more and more of us, all for as little as seven cents of our food dollar. No other country has such a healthy diet or such variety in agriculture. So the next time you meet a farmer or rancher, say thanks to the growers of things we eat and the fiber we wear. The North American Farmer, putting food on our table. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. Next Saturday, Tyrone Willingham's Fighting Irish of Notre Dame are back on NBC when they return home to take on Boston College. Next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, NBC. Next Sunday, these streets will not be filled with traffic. They'll be filled with 30,000 runners from around the globe. The world-famous New York City Marathon. Next Sunday, 3 Eastern, NBC. Orientate, the third favorite in the first four races this afternoon on Breeders' Cup Day, returning 740 to win. Thunderella, a 35 to 1 shot, finishing second with Edgar Prado, who had a very eventful race before this. And Crafty CT rounds out the trifecta here at Arlington Park this afternoon. It's a cool day, but it was a scorching pace. Let's go downstairs for some analysis of this six furlongs in 108 and 4. Well, Tom Durkin, at six furlongs, you cannot afford any mistakes. But Trevor, I thought it was a clean run. Other than maybe Day Trader hopping at the start, 
It was another clean race. A remarkably clean race. That day trader did throw his head in the air right at the start as he came out the gate. You know, minor uh, interference for him, but not, nothing major. But to have 14 runners going six furlongs, it was a remarkably clean run race. Everybody had a clear shot. I was watching the horses at the back. Kona Gold had every possible chance. You know, he's probably getting just a little long in the tooth right now. He was running his heart out, but he, he was passing horses, but he wasn't flying by them, you know, and Crafty CT ran on well, too. The key was the positioning, and yeah. Bailey was able to put orientate in the perfect position. I think this was the perfect ride by Jerry Bailey. It was all patience, and as we take a look now, as they're coming at the start, as you can see, the horse on the outside broke a little outwards. That was Day Trader, and um, the rest of them, though, very clear. Let's go to the top of the stretch now. We see the big long shot, Thunder Rello, in the green colors is going to be on the lead. Okay, here, back on the back stretch again. Here's Thunderello in the green on the inside. Here he is, about a length in front of Orientate in the in the gold cap, going to come on the outside. But Jerry Bailey was very, very patient here. He could have let him run earlier, and he probably would have run out of steam. But you can see Jerry Bailey's asking him here, but not asking him full effort just yet. And I think he was a little worried here that this long shot might hold on. But he gradually, now he's going to go to the stick here on Orientate, and he really just wears him down inch by inch. But this is one of Jerry Bailey's better rides in my book. Uh, I think it came down to patience, experience, and he didn't let the occasion overwhelm him. You know, and Scott Lake, who trains Thunderello, is known for training sprinters, claimers primarily, but that horse hung in there kind of proves Trevor to me anyway. It's very difficult in this race to come from way out of it. We've had winners in the past. Nobody raised a hoof from the back markers today. They just can catch up at six furlongs. You know, leader just East did do it that one year. You're always going to get exceptions, but you can give me a horse in the first five anyway, turning for home, and preferably in the first three turning for home. And that's Scott Lake, and imagine if he had won a breed cup that could have made his year that's for sure and he came so close at what 35 to 1 odds the great philly extra heat that's been so powerful could not make the lead once that didn't happen that eliminated her chance she was never happy today i saw her as soon as she couldn't get to the front it was almost like she panicked she says what's going on here how come i'm not on the lead and really at the at the 3 8 pole she was beaten you knew that she wasn't going to hit the board from there and i think these horses they do they get used to a running style and you know they like to run on their own and uh, they have that herd instinct and when she was behind horses and she couldn't get to the front she probably literally panicked you know, i don't know being from california you had the crafty ct and you had kona gold in your sights and they had their shot at the top of the stretch just didn't happen definitely crafty ct finished well as i said earlier kona gold was passing horses but just didn't have the zip that he used to have two or three years ago and very disappointing was swept overboard you know he was last early on but i was watching him he was traveling nicely and uh, nakatani brought him to the outside gave him every possible chance and there was just nothing there he just came up totally empty he wasn't even passing horses so he was disappointing. The filly ran well. Kalukan Queen, she ran fifth right behind Kona Gold. So Kalukan Queen did well. All right, let's go to Kenny Rice. All right, thanks, guys. Edgar Prado created a lot of excitement here. That 35 to one shot, Thunderello came so close. But you didn't have any choice breaking from the rail with all that speed. You had to go. Absolutely. When you're in the one hole, you don't have many choices, really. Either come running out of there or take back. Uh, and I can take back with this kind of hole. He's tremendous speed, a lot of heart. And uh, we take the chance to let him go, and you see what happens. Almost won the race. Yeah, going out quick, I don't think surprised anyone. Staying out there against the best sprinters in the country surprised some people, but not you, you said. Well, he, he had the quality, you know, he had the talent. He's a very nice horse. And the only thing is he's been off a um, couple months, a few months, I mean, and uh, coming back this year, and he, he proved that he can run. So he showed everybody he's a nice horse, and uh, he really be tough in the future. Okay, good luck the rest of the day. Thanks, Edgar. Thank you. Edgar Prado, we talk about a lot of the jockeys here. He's been having a great season so far as well. He won his first Saratoga riding title this past summer and rode strong at Keeneland in Kentucky this past fall. He certainly is one of the up-and-comers here, picking up a second in this Breeders' Cup spread. Now let's go over to Bob Newmeyer. Official order of finish, Kenny Rice has orientated again. Bob and Beverly Lewis and D. Wayne Lucas winning the sprint today. The big long shot, Thunderello. Making up a huge exacta here at Arlington Park. Big loser swept overboard. No finish there. Bonapaw was certainly not involved as well. Let's go to Mike with a presentation. Well, Bob and Beverly Lewis get their first Breeders' Cup winner. Congratulations to you. Well, Wayne Lucas, of course, extends his lead as the leading trainer in Breeders' Cup history. And Jerry Bailey now takes the lead from Pat Day. A very eventful sprint to make the presentation. Ron Kenning Sofer, the president and GM of Napa, Chicago. Bob and Mary, on behalf of Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers across the country, their families and employees, it's a great privilege to present you with this Breeders' Cup Championship Trophy. Congratulations. And it's a heavy one, Bob. You might want to help her with one. this. Help her with that. Oh, hell, hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would I tell you? It really is. How you guys 
feeling. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I have to tell you this. I was sent down from the from the turf club to the paddock from Bob Baffert. He said, tell Wayne, Wayne Lucas to get the job done. I did second <laughs> and third for you. We need a first. So. Uh, well, Wayne Lucas got the job done for you. As I said, Wayne, the leading trainer in Breeders' Cup history. That's your 17th win. Come across here, Wayne. Just a great job. This is a special horse. Didn't make the lead today, uh, but just ran his heart out. Well, again, Jerry, uh, I thought did a great job with him. And uh, my assistant, Mike Maker, has absolutely been sleeping with this horse. And a lot of credit goes to him, too. But uh, we've got a good team. And the horse, I think, uh, runs well fresh. We uh, took a little criticism. They said, we're not going to let Lucas get off and let him <laughs> rest eight weeks. But we wanted to come in fresh, and it worked. Well, of course, now, last year the source ran the Classic. This year the Sprint, you got the Sprint champion now. We're very versatile. We go from a mile and a quarter back to six furlongs. No, we, uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to let him do what he does best. And once, uh, I'm a little slow learner, but once I figured out that he was a sprinter, we kept him there, and it's working well. And Jerry Bailey, that was just an excellent ride on Orientate. You were going to the whip left-handed, or right-handed. You switched to the left hand for maybe one swipe of the whip, and then right back to the right hand, and this horse really responded. He really did. Sometimes you just have to do a little something different. Even though these horses are professionals, they know what they're doing, sometimes it helps to switch them up a little bit. But I've got so much confidence in him, and I can't say enough about Wayne and Mike's job getting this horse ready off that layoff. You think you were getting, but you know that was a 35-to-1 shot in front of you, and he was running his heart out. Oh, I know the horse very well. He runs in New York, yeah. and I, I, I knew I had my work cut out, but I never doubted that this horse could catch him. Well, he ran a heck of a race. That was a great ride. Yes, Wayne. we, we got to eliminate the also eligibles in these things. That yeah. horse that ran second was really done. <laughs> Scott Lake did a great job with that he, one. He really did. He really did. Congratulations, Wayne, Bob and Beverly, Jerry Bailey, orientate the champion sprinter. One thing we've learned, Mike Battaglia, is never, ever, ever count out Wayne Lucas. One thing we don't have to worry about him in this race, this is the fillies in the paddock for the filly and mare turf. He doesn't have a horse in here, but we're taking a peek at Golden Apples right here, and a few minutes ago, the blacksmith was working on her shoe in the paddock. We're not quite sure what happened or why. Sometimes these fillies can dance around and maybe step on themselves and loosen a shoe, and there's a, a blacksmith standing by in the paddock at all times to tighten up any nails and just to make sure all the shoes are in place. So we will see about these fillies on the turf when we come back here at Arlington Park. For the horse, strength is of prime importance. It guarantees his most precious asset, his incredible speed. Strength is the basis of his future, his offspring, for generations to come. When you're speaking of strength for generations, speak to someone who's in it for the long run. Strength, Bessemer Trust, enhancing private wealth for generations. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood, crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. I will not be afraid of the dark. I will feel better about my dad living by himself. I will know my children are safe. I will finally be able to relax! ADT's advanced home monitoring helps protect more Americans than any other security company from burglary, fire, flood, even carbon monoxide. Call now and get ADT's sophisticated burglary system installed from $99. You could also save up to 20% off your basic homeowner's insurance. ADT. Always there. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle.
Sun America NBC Sports Desk. Here's your host, Andrea Joyce. Welcome back to the Sports Desk, everyone. We'll send you back to the Breeders' Cup shortly. First, some key games in college football. And we start with unbeaten Notre Dame visiting Florida State. The Seminoles were 10-point favorites and were playing in front of the largest crowd ever at Doak Campbell Stadium. But guess what? Once again, the Irish defense and special teams have come up with huge plays to spark Notre Dame. This game was actually tied 10-10 at the half, but the Irish have pulled ahead 34-24 with just a few seconds left on their way to an 8-0 start under Tyrone Willingham, a team that wasn't even ranked at the start of the season. And we will bring you next week's Notre Dame game. The Irish host one of their biggest rivals, Boston College. Ironically, the last time Notre Dame was 8-0 was 1993. And after beating Florida State in a showdown of number one versus number two, Notre Dame lost the following week to Boston College. Notre Dame, Boston College, next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, right here on NBC. Elsewhere, top-ranked Miami on the road at West Virginia. The Hurricanes win it 40-23. Miami extends the nation's longest winning streak to 29 games. Elsewhere, undefeated Virginia Tech is leading Temple in the fourth quarter. Iowa on the road in Ann Arbor, 34-9 in the fourth quarter. The Hawkeyes looking to improve to 5-0 in the Big Ten. Number 10, LSU visiting Auburn, second quarter. Auburn's Trey Smith takes the handoff, runs right, breaks a tackle, and scores from 13 yards out. The Tigers took a 17-0 lead. Third quarter, Tigers thinking upset. Jason Campbell sells the play action and hits Robert Johnson in the end zone. Auburn goes up. 24-0, and they go on to upset LSU 31-7. Log on to NBCSports.com for in-depth coverage of today's college football action, including the latest scores and stats, as well as special features on the top stories and games. It's all at NBCSports.com. And we'll have highlights of Notre Dame a little later on. Up next, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. We'll send you back to Arlington Park right after these messages from your local station. This has been the Sun America NBC Sports Desk. Sun America, the retirement specialist. It's NBC Halloween Thursday. A treat it is. As Monica and Chandler try to have a baby, Chandler hides a scary secret. You tricked me to get me into bed? I feel so used. And on an all-new Scrubs, it's Tom Cavanaugh stars as Big Brother. You remember we were kids every Halloween you try and scare the crap out of me? <laughs> New comedy NBC Thursday. 1985, Kenmore teenager John Justice kills his family and a neighbor. We discovered three bodies. For the past 17 years, he's been in prison. In 36 months, he's getting out. Want to live back in Kenmore or Buffalo? In a Channel 2 News special report, Scott Levin goes behind bars for new insight into the crime that shocked Western New York. How do we know that you're not going to do this crime again? And what turns kids into killers? Do they have no hope? John Justice, Thursday night at 11. The Basil family of dealerships invites you to watch the excitement of NASCAR this weekend. Right here on Channel 2, on your side. Well, get this. A town in California wants to now change its name to Got Milk. Monday morning, we'll tell you what the town's <laughs> folks have to say about that. We'll have your Bill's game day highlights. Guys, we're, we're almost out of milk. I see that. We'll also have your forecast. Monday on Daybreak. Channel 2 reminds you to set your clocks back one hour for daylight savings time. The Breeders' Cup works. Don't worry, there's a FedEx brought to you by Bessemer Trust, enhancing private wealth for generations. By Napa Auto Care Car Centers. Napa, we keep America running. By Alberto V05, shampoos, conditioners, and treatments. And by FedEx, need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx Express and FedEx Ground. Well, we're back at Arlington Park where the Phillies for the Philly and Mare turf race are in the paddock. We're going to take a look at the odds. Some attention, plenty of attention, going to Islington, the British Philly, who just finished third in the pre de, uh, fifth, rather, beaten two lengths in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, getting a good bit of attention, as is Banks Hill. She's been on something of an odyssey lately. She is the defending champion from last year. She came back to France, spent the year, raced fairly well, came back over here, and then went on a bit of an odyssey. She came to run 
in the East Coast and the raining and it was soft, so they sent her to California to the Yellow Ribbon where the going was firmer. She had some bad traffic problems that day, finished third, and then changed barns, moved into Bobby Frankel's barn. She's been there ever since, and he is now the new trainer of record, taking over from Andre Fav, and there she stands looking very well. Quite the opposite has been true for Dublino, who is a rather petite and very pretty three-year-old filly. She has won both of her starts since being imported to this country. She races out in California, and she's trained by Laura De Saru. And it has been a rather meteoric rise for Laura De Saru since, since her days as an exercise rider for the late Hall of Fame trainer Charlie Whittingham. Only three years after getting her trainer's license, she's come to the Breeders' Cup with a very strong hand. Her great filly, Azari, won the distaff earlier today. And while she may not yet be a household name, De Saru has been in the business for a very long time. Clearly, those Whittingham skills live on through his last protege. My name is Laura DeSaru. I'm lucky enough to spend every day of my life now training racehorses. I've been around horses ever since I was a little girl. When I started, there weren't very many female trainers, and that would have been very difficult. So I approached it from another avenue. School didn't interest me very much because I knew I was interested in horses, so I, I went to the racetrack, and the obvious thing was to go ask Charlie for a job. And at that time, he was just starting to switch over to female exercise riders, and I was one of the original Charlie's Angels. It was magic. Charlie had emerged as the premier trainer in the world, and we idolized him. That was a big deal, being on the front page of the LA Times Sports. We were really proud of that, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, that was great. That was the beginning of it. I was always wondering, where's the light at the end of my tunnel? Charlie was always very encouraging to branch out and develop more than just what being an exercise rider has to offer. But some people thought that when I started training that I was um, missing some steps, but I don't let that worry me. I did everything from hot walker to groom to assistant work. There's nothing about training horses that being masculine or feminine, man or woman, is going to give you an advantage. Women can do this. Indeed they can. Laura De Saru earlier became the second woman to win a Breeders' Cup event. Janine Sahadi was the first. She did it twice, and she happens to be married to Ben Cecil, who is the trainer of Golden Apples, and Kenny Rice is in the paddock with Ben Cecil. Charlie Ben Cecil knows this track. He knows Golden Apples well. She was here to win the Beverly D, a big race this summer for her. Uh, the firmer going, though, that day than today. Do you worried a little bit about the yielding, sir? Not really. I mean, she ran on a very soft track at Hollywood, and I think all, she was the only horse made up ground all day. I mean, obviously, I'd have preferred it a little firmer, but I don't think she'll have any problem getting over it. We have a terrific field in here, including your Golden Apples. How do you see in the shape up, Ben? The, the horse I'd be the, the most scared of is Islington. She's a very good filly, um, but, you know, my Philly gives 100% every time, and that's all you can ask for. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben Cecil, who is the trainer of Golden Apples, one of those to watch in this Philly and mare turf. Charlesy? Kenny, she's arguably the best turf mare in the country. There she goes. Golden Apples had a golf ball-sized cyst in her throat this summer. Really, really set her back in her training, but she's on top of her game now and certainly one of the ones to beat in here today. And as you see, the Phillies are on the racetrack. Ready to go and warm up for the Philly and Mare Turf. We'll take a look at our post parade. Well, we're going to wait. We're going to wait until they turn. They're going to walk up towards the clubhouse there in front of this gorgeous Arlington Park grandstand, arguably the prettiest racing structure in the entire world. We have a field of 12 here, 12 Phillies and Mares. And number one is risk averse. Pat Kelly saddled her to win Keeneland's Queen Elizabeth Stakes for owner Peter Schiff, whose late father John had horses with his father, Hall of Fame trainer T.J. Kelly. Real family affair. 
Here's Islington. She was supplemented for 90,000. This British filly won the Yorkshire Oaks and then finished fifth, beaten only two lengths after briefly leading in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, the toughest race in the world. Another supplementary filly from overseas is a three-year-old Turtle Bow. This French filly was an excellent second in the Flower Bowl last month and should take to this turf course today. It has a bit of a cut in it, as the Europeans say. And here is that lightly raced filly we spoke of, Dublino, the three-year-old, has finished first in both of her starts for her new trainer, Laura De Saru, after being imported, but she was disqualified and won. And if those racing silks look familiar, they belong to Michael Klein, son of Eugene Klein, who raced winning colors and Lady Secret. Here's Banks Hill. We talked about her in the paddock. Last year's winner back to defend her title, but she, now she has a new trainer and a new jockey, Bobby Franklin, Jerry Bailey. She doesn't really like the soft. It's been documented for a long time, but we'll find out for sure today. There was some speculation that she might be scratched because the going was fairly deep for her liking. And here is Golden Apples. She won the Beverly D and the Yellow Ribbon for owner Gary Tanaka, who believes in buying proven quality runners from Europe and bypassing the yearling sales, and he's been very successful at it indeed. And here is Gossamer, full sister to Barathea, who won the mile in 1994, also for trainer Luca Kamani. And when her owner, Gerald Lee, died this summer after a long illness, racing truly lost a great friend. Here's Zenda, top-class British three-year-old filly, was unlucky to lose in her only American start down at Keeneland. She's trained by John Gosden, who won the inaugural Breeders' Cup mile with the great filly, Royal Heroine. Zenda was seen sporting earmuffs here training this week, but doesn't seem to be wearing them right now. Seems very settled, in fact. Here's number nine, Chopinina. Canadian filly had been a real problem child in the morning. She didn't want to train, she sulked, she kicked, she carried on. But her new trainer, Alex Fair, was very patient with her and has found a key to training her and has now coaxed two wins and a second out ever for owner Steve Savro of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here's Owlsley, and if those yellow and gray silks look familiar to you, they belong to Arthur Hancock and were carried by Sunday Silence in his dramatic classic victory over Easy Goer in 1989. And here is Starine. This is the house horse in Bobby Frankel's barn. He purchased her for his own interest in France last year and turned her into a grade one winner. She wasn't at her best this spring, but she's really come around lately and a little bit of a sleeper in here at 13 to 1. And last but not least from the Godolphin operation is Kazia, winner of the English Oaks and the Flower Bowl. But her season has really been compromised by foot problems, and she popped another abscess last week and missed some training time. Be tough for this filly, but she's good on her best day. And that is the field. Now let's go down to Bob and Mike and see if they can make sense out of all these fillies. <laughs> well, I'd like to, Chelsea, but the condition of the ground makes this race more difficult. Let's face it. Some horses love it firm, others like it soft. We're kind of in between today, right. Mike, so it's kind of hard to tell because we know that a certain horse like Banks Hill does not like it soft. How do you figure it? Well, I, you know, Banks Hill is the defending champ. There's a shot of her, and uh, she was scratched from the Flower Bowl at Belmont earlier this year because of the soft turf conditions, but Donna reported that although it's yielding out there, that it still felt like it was good footing underneath, and uh, I think if she handles it, she's going to be really dangerous. This year, she's run strictly against the Colts in Europe. Her only start in the U.S. came right here in the Yellow Ribbon. Look at this. She's completely blocked behind a wall of horses as they turn for home. Golden Apples is the horse in the white cap on the extreme outside. She got a big jump on Banks Hill. These two were right together in the turn. Golden Apples got the big jump. Banks Hill had to steady. She comes in third. Watch what uh, Nakatani will take kind of a hold over here. He's not asking her to run again. He knows she can't get to the top two horses, but I think today's going to be different. I really think that she's going to fire a big race, and uh, if she runs like she did last year, if the, if the soft turf doesn't bother her, she's the winner. And the question of Islington, this is a marvelous runner from Europe. They tell us she doesn't like it soft. She ran a brilliant race in the Arc de Triomphe. Golden right. Apples is a factor. I'm going to shoot for the moon here with a starine for Bobby Frankel. Just a hunch, I know this horse likes the soft running. They supplemented her in this race, did Bobby Frankel. And every once in a while, he'll put over a long shot. And Starine has only had one race recently, but in her top form, I think she can run with these, Mike. Just a hunch, Starine at 13 to one. But Golden Apple's definitely won the beat too. She's the favorite right now. So Starine, uh, upset for Bob, and uh, I'm gonna go for Banks Hill, Bob. All right, Mike and Numi. 
Cyber cappers see it this way. Golden Apple's the number one choice. Banks Hill and Islington. The Philly and Mayor Turf coming up next. We return to the biggest day in American racing, the Breeders' Cup at Arlington Park outside Chicago after this. Hi, Joe. Hi, FedEx guy. Let's get to work. So it can store up to a thousand addresses. It lets you print labels and find a drop box. It can email you when the package has been delivered and more. <laughs> FedEx.com is just like having your own FedEx guy. Hey. Yeah? Kind of freaked me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Long John Silver's boatload of seafood, crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. Year after year, people you know and trust feed more and more of us. All for as little as seven cents of our food dollar. No other country has such a healthy diet or such variety in agriculture. So the next time you meet a farmer or rancher, say thanks to the growers of things we eat and the fiber we wear. The North American farmer, putting food on our table. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Guinness draft in a bottle. Once upon a time, in a little house in the Swiss countryside, a maiden entered a bedroom and saw three lotions. The first lotion left her skin too dry. The second, too greasy. The third, St. Ives' new whip silk, was more than just right. It turned her dry, dry skin into silky, smooth skin. She then discovered it was part of an entire line of St. Ives' lotions, and from that day forward, it was softness ever after. The softness is yours. The secret is Swiss. St. Ives. Sunday on Boomtown, what would you do? Get in the back, now! If someone you knew was hijacked. I'm gonna stay right here with you. And time was running out. Fight it! Stop. Hey, cops, you listen? Listen to this. All new Boomtown, NBC Sunday. Golden Apple's getting most of the attention here, slightly over Banks Hill for the Philly and Mayor Turk here at Arlington Park. They're going a mile and a quarter on the turf. The gate is situated down at the head of the stretch on a kind of a funny little angle. Donna Barton Brothers is down there now. Donna, how does that look? Well, the angle is an odd angle, Charles. See, I'm right behind the gate right now, but I think it'll be fair to everyone. It's a small enough field. They should get away clean. Um, I, I do want to tell you, I talked to Gary Stevens after the Breeders' Cup mile, and he sure thought the turf course was in wonderful shape. Um, he thought it would probably favor the Europeans. He said it's what they would call good to soft ground. So it looks like it might help uh, the European horses, but it'll be a great race, Charles, either way. Well, we'll get a good line on these fillies here very shortly. One, one reason probably why Islington is getting some attention at the windows. Banks Hill, of course, the big question mark on whether she can handle this or not. And Golden Apple's the favorite. And there is a look at Islington. She just finished fifth, beaten only two lengths uh, in the arc just three weeks ago today. She looks quite bright and none the worse for wear, but that is a tough race, and it's only three weeks off. And there goes Zenda into the gate, and we'll take it up to Dom Durkin for the call. A lot of questions to be answered, Charles C., in the next two minutes here as they move into line for the Philly and Mare turf. And there is Turtle Bow making her second start in the United States. This French Philly ran a great race in New York the last time out, just falling uh, a neck short of Kazia. Two front runners you can expect here, Chopinina and Kazia. They've uh, shown speed, and there is a great stretch runner in Dublino. What explosive power she has in the last furlongs of the race. There is Banks Hill in the pink cap, the defending champion, and the very distinctive Starine with those distinctive colors of the uh, owner, trainer Bobby Franco. Golden Apples, the favorite, is moving into post position number six here with Patrick Valenzuela. And on the outside, Kazia to complete the field for this year's Philly and Mare Turf. Kazia just walking just a little bit from her outside post position. Ready for the start. Ooh, Kazia still, still trying to walk a little bit. She's a little hesitant, reluctant to move into the starting gate. 
Garcia making her second start uh, in the United States. And the first one was a winning one in wire-to-wire -wire fashion. She's not uh, doing much to help the assistant starters here. Blue Knot, the starter here at Arlington Park. His crew doing their best to try to get a very stubborn Kazia into the starting gate. Trying to loop their arms in behind her. Now she's in, They're ready for the start. William Blue Knot taking his uh, spot to dispatch the field. Oh, they're wild. Veered out soon after the start. Down toward the inside, Turtle Bow has some early speed, and Chopinina emerges from mid-pack. So it's Kazia and Chopinina to match strides for the early lead. Kazia, the front runner now. Chopinina has been backed off and will concede the early lead to Kazia. Two and a half lengths back, and Turtle Bow is running along in third. Then the Gray Philly, starving his fourth. Defending champion Banks Hill has been maneuvered to the inside early. She's racing in fifth position now. Gossamer broke well, but she's been taken back into sixth. Down on the inside up to Bleed. Seventh, Owsley three wide eighth. English Philly Islington drafting in behind horses in the European manner. She's now ninth. And down toward the inside is the late running risk of Golden Apples has only one horse beaten, and that is long shot Zenda. The opening quarter went in a sensible 24 and two fifth seconds. The half was 49 seconds flat, and Kazia is loose on an easy lead here. Kazia out there by two. And Chopinina Emil Ramsani still stalking, conceding that lead to Kazia, stretching it out to three lengths now. And then it's Turtle Bow racing in third, Starine is fourth. Banks Hill has been over to the outside for clear running in fifth position now with about a half mile to go. And then it's Gossamer moving sweetly down toward the inside in sixth. Islington is seventh and she's asked for a bit more. Dublino is still about nine or ten lengths from the leader. And the leader has been unopposed. Kazia through three quarters in one, twelve and two. Chopinina still running in second then it's turtle boat toward the inside they've been one two three all the way around the racetrack and they're that way as they turn for home and now starine picks it up she moves to the third banks hill has asked for more run fourth islington is trying to find a way through from fifth dublino is cut loose and on the far outside it's golden apples risk is coming through down toward the inside gossamer in the thickness starine takes the lead starine has overhauled kazia banks hill is there on the outside islington trying hard late gossamer looking for a way through early and Starine had a pretty good spot she was fourth most of the way around they allowed Kazia and uh, Chopinina an easy time of it in the early going those two had no excuses Starine ran a great race here to defeat the defending champion Banks Hill and it didn't appear that the course was much of a problem for her today Starine owned and trained by one Robert Frankel and ridden by Johnny Velasquez here who won an earlier race today with storm flag flying the final time for the Philly and Merrick Turf here was 2.03 and 2. Johnny Velasquez, a star on the rise, and two victories on the Breeders' Cup Day card today, just underlining his great ability. His father's been very gravely ill down in Puerto Rico. He missed a lot of work in recent days to go down and visit his father, but he's got to be feeling pretty good right now. And Donna Barton Brothers is going to ask him just exactly how he feels. Donna. Having a little trouble with my microphone here. Johnny Velasquez, congratulations. You had two wins coming into today's card, and you've got two wins so far on it. How about it? I'll tell you, it's unbelievable. It's nice to ride these kind of horses. Uh, tell me about your trip, Johnny. I had a perfect trip, you know. I was a little bit concerned about the post position that I had. I know she needs to save some ground. She broke well enough. I put her right to the rail, saved some ground. Got to the 384, just kind of dra dropped the head, let, let her do the whole, her own thing. And Murray, when I asked it, she responded right away. It looked to me when the horses went by us for the first time down the backside that the horse on the lead was getting out pretty badly. I know you had a keen eye on that, just waiting for that to open. I was looking to see what Charles was going to do. When one, once he got to, to the last turn over there, uh, he had control over it, so I didn't worry about it. I was going to see what, what he was going to do, or go inside or go outside. Once he, he went back to the, to the rail, I, I stayed where I was. All right, Johnny, congratulations. Charles C, two for Johnny Velasquez on the day. Two for the day and four overall. That makes the
the fourth Breeders' Cup, and then, of course, it's the second Breeders' Cup victory for Bobby Frankel. He won with Squirtle Sport last year, but this one counts for two or three extras because the money is all his. Starreen is his own horse. He did not even have to put up the 90000 He supplemented her last year, and he got credit this year, so she got to ride in here for free. And here she is. She was known to like the soft turf. Bob Newmeyer picked her good. I hope he bet a bundle because Starreen just stalked that early pace and moved to them when she was ready. Look, John Velasquez never even turns his stick over. Easiest sort of win for Starreen. Bobby Frankel's getting the hang of this Breeders' Cup thing now after going so long and having so much trouble. A great day for Bobby Frankel and Starreen and the Philly Turf. Saltwater, great for my body, tough on my hair. My solution? All new VO5 milks. Shampoos and conditioners with vitamin A and soy milk protein. They build back the shine and make my hair look and feel incredible. Try strawberries and cream, creamy fresh peaches, and pina colada. They'll leave your hair looking fresh and fabulous. If VO5 milks can make my hair look this good, imagine what it can do for yours. Now enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. There's something of Ireland in all of us. The music, the poetry, the warmth of that Emerald Isle where my mother was born. And the soft words of my mother's songs and the soft mists keep calling me back. There's never been a better time to visit. Come with me to Ireland. One week vacation from $499, including airfare, accommodation, and rental car. For your free travel kit, call 1-800-SHAMROCK or visit shamrock.org. Centuries of breeding, endless attention and education, countless days of training. Now distilled to a single moment in time and a single goal. Performance. Performance made possible by many skilled people spanning generations. Performance, Bessemer Trust, enhancing private wealth for generations. Seize opportunities when they arise. Go more places. Get there faster. Get home sooner with NetJets, the world leader in fractional aircraft ownership. NetJets makes owning a jet a smart business decision for you and your shareholders, offering all the competitive advantages of full aircraft ownership at a fraction of the cost. More successful companies and individuals choose NetJets. Why not you? NetJets. Everything else is just a plane. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. The victorious Johnny Velasquez returning to the winner's circle on Breeders' Cup Day for a second time. This time aboard a five-year-old mare, Starine, the victress of the Philly and Mare turf. She was a good price today, 28.40 to win. Banks Hill, the defending champion, finishing second. European Islington was third, clicking for a $156 exacta. The try paid over $1,000. And before we left for the track today, Bob Neumeyer whispered these words to me. I like Starry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the drinks are on me tonight. But when Bobby Frankel has to put up his own money, Trevor Denman, as the owner, $90,000 supplement, you know he means business. He's as good as there is in the game. You knew she liked the soft turf, and John Velasquez is an underrated rider. Put her in perfect position. Perfect trip this afternoon, but really, there was the essence of Bobby Frankel putting up his own money. It's one thing telling the owner, I think we should supplement this horse, but when it's coming out of your bank, uh, it's a whole different situation. So he had so much confidence in it to put that money up, and who's better than Bobby Frankel? No one. You can't be better than Bobby Frankel. He's the smartest trainer out there. And great 
drive by Velasquez too, had it perfectly placed. And a good thing today has been the cleanness of the races on the turf. We have had very, very little trouble. Islington had a spot of trouble after the start, had a check just a little, and then got in a little bit of a bumping match at the top of the lane, but nothing really severe. I don't think she was going to win it anyway, but really a clean run race. Well, let's take a look at uh, the running of the race. John Velasquez, by the way, has a mount in every Breeders' Cup race. Only Jerry Bailey's had that distinction before. He's a popular guy, and he showed why. Definitely. He got a, got a lot of uh, followers this afternoon. Now, here he is right here on Starreen with the red cap. You can see him going to come on the outside here. Um, I'll go to run down that pacemaker, Kazir, who set the pace, but really folded when they came. And there's the gray. And look at that confident ride by John Velasquez. He's just sitting there. A little tap on the shoulder. The horse explodes right here. He puts them away. Some of them are going to come running on on the outside. Banks Hill chases her. Golden Apples, Islington. But really, this race was won at the eighth pole. John Velasquez really just had a pointer in the right direction, and she just took off. This is a powerful, powerful run. And Banks Hill kicked in for second. Again, I didn't think she loved the off going. Maybe she's a step slower than last year. You know, but the Frankel, Frankel exacta. Exactly, and it paid very, very well, too. I think Banks Hill might be better suited to the English style of racing. A little slower. She seems to be take a little while to get going. You know, when she she can explode quicker on these tracks. Obviously, last year she was, you know, a better filly than she is now. But she just didn't seem to, 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 to kick it in as well as she did the last time. All right, let's take a look at the official order of finish. Philly in Mare Turf. The winner is Starine, owned and trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden by John Velasquez, who wins the race. Islington, the European filly, third. Golden Apples had to come way out of it, settled only for fourth money. Zenda Turtlebow, Dublino didn't fire today, but the winner with the happy Bobby Frankel and friends is Mike Battaglia. And you're right, it is a hop, happy Bobby Frankel. He runs one, two, puts up his own money to supplement this horse. And uh, John Velasquez gets his second win on the card to make the presentation. Jim Marino, President, Alberto Care Worldwide. Thank you. Such a pleasure to have this event in our hometown. On behalf of Alberto Culver, it's over 12,000 employees, our great brands, Alberto V05, Tresemme, St. Ives. Congratulations to Starine on a great run. And it was a great run, Bobby. We talked about you putting up your own money. You thought she might have been best last time out. You say she just loves the soft going. Well, she was best last time. He, he couldn't tuck her in last time. She was 3-4 wide and no pace in the race. And uh, she loves it soft. I, 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 you know, when it rained and rained and rained, I thought we had a chance. So, But you had to supplement before it rained. Well, no, no. We, she was supplemented last year, and this year oh, she was okay. automatically in. Oh, know? good. So, yeah. so the rain had nothing to do with it, but you, no, no. It, it really helped you. Johnny, is this your daughter? Yes, this is my daughter. What's her name? She's enjoying the races, Lorena. Hi, Lorena. Hi. <laughs> and you're proud of your daddy. He's won two races today. She knows it, too. Well, Bobby, congratulations. You, you run second with Banks Hill, too. Yeah, you can't forget that. that. Yeah, the ground wasn't in their favor, but she still tried real hard. You know? yeah. It was for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was it. It was for Velasquez. It was for Johnny. And Frankel runs one, two, Starreen and Banks Hill. Congratulations, guys. Charles, see? All right, Mike. Thank you very much. The Philly and Mare Turf is in the books now, and we are going to turn our attention to the juvenile. Take a look at the morning line for the two-year-old Colts. If you're thinking warmer weather in May and Kentucky Derby, watch this race. And here they are, vindication from Bob Baffert's barn. Sky Mesa, unfortunately, a scratch day before yesterday. He wrenched his ankle. And Tuckett, a late-rising comer. We'll see how they all make out in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile very shortly. It's Halloween Thursday on Will & Grace. Catch! Oh! As Karen makes a life-changing discovery. This is it, Jackie. <gasps> Grace and Harry fall further in love. This guy's really important to me. All leading to the wedding event of November. And on Good Morning Miami, be there for the first kiss. New comedy, NBC Thursday. What to do? Be a part of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus. Before showtime, audience members join performers on the arena floor for a hands-on adventure. Log on to WGRZ.com for more information. What to do from Channel 2. Play it safe this Halloween. Join Channel 2 on your side for the gallery of treats to benefit kids escaping drugs. For a dollar donation, fill your Halloween bag with all kinds of goodies. The gallery of treats, Wednesday, October 30th. See you there. <laughs> Channel 2 and the New York Lottery are giving you more chances to win in a brand new second chance lottery contest. 222 more chances to win. Send in any non-winning New York Lottery ticket. Then watch Channel 2 News Daybreak from 5 to 7 a.m. to see if your name is announced. Call us.
Dallas within 22 minutes and win 222 Winter Wonderland instant game tickets and lunch for two from Tim Hortons. But you got to watch to win another Daybreak Second Chance Lottery Contest from the New York Lottery and Channel 2 on your side. WGRZ.com, your link to news and features that matter to you. Grisham's best-selling story comes to television. Matt Damon, Claire Danes, Danny DeVito, John Voight, and Danny Glover, The Rainmaker, NBC Tonight, 8, 7 Central. Sunday, a mother killed. Can he track down a murderer the world can't find? Don't you worry. All new Law & Order Criminal Intent, NBC Sunday. We are back at Arlington Park where the two-year-old Colts are gathering in the paddock. As we mentioned earlier, Sky Mesa had to be scratched day before yesterday due to a slight injury to an ankle. So that leaves the question of favoritism up in the air. And it seems that the public is turning to YYY, who has really come to hand here lately and has been very highly touted by his trainer, Patrick Biancombe, the lovely Colt trying to get this distance for the first time. Kenny Rice is down in the paddock, not far from YYY. Charlesy, we're right next to YYY, and I'm right next to Patrick Biancone, who trains him, and also Zavada in this race. YYY, winner of a grade two, a grade uh, three, a grade one, kept progressing for you coming into this one, Patrick. Yes, and we're happy to be here. Both of us are in good form, and uh, they come to race very safely. Now it's a world championship for two-year-old, and we're very lucky to be here. And, Hopefully one of them will win. You said with why, why, why that he was close to the perfect horse because his sire, Mr. Greeley, who was a runner-up in the Breeders' Cup sprint, and then on the dam side, you had a lot of distance. So you got speed and you got stamina. Yeah, we will know very soon, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, we try to find good excuse to um, give us, us more spirit, but uh, we see today what's going on. And uh, like I said, we're here and it's a tough race. And uh, my friend Bob Buffer, uh, 35 courses in a race, and I was a trainer too. I mean, it's tough. It's a hard race. And I know you wanted to get one more race in for Zavada, who did not get a run in the Champagne because of a slight uh, swelling in the leg, but he's here and running today. But it's been a long time, it's almost uh, seven weeks, I guess, since the hopeful. Yeah, but he's fresh and he's in good form, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, good luck Thank to you. you. Patrick Biancone, who is here with two, why, 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 and Zavada. Now let's go over to Bob, Bob Newmeyer. Well, earlier we mentioned the disappointment in the Rock of Gibraltar camp, the Coolmore stud, but they're here in big-time numbers for this juvenile race. And they have a rather interesting philosophy, and that is spend big money for beautifully bred yearlings and hope they can hit a grand slam with a Kentucky Derby winner or a Belmont winner or a Breeders' Cup winner and then turn that money into a high-priced syndication. And certainly Vin Nisselroy, a son of Stormcat, cost, get this, folks, $6.4 million at the Keeneland September yearling sale. That's the second most expensive yearling in the history of the sale. But they also have Hold That Tiger, number three. He's by Stormcat. He cost $1.1 million. And they also have Tomahawk, number 11, who's by Seattle Sloop. He cost $2.5 million. So the owners and Michael Tabor is part of this group. The Magners, uh, et cetera, have about 11 or $12 million of their money invested in these beautifully bred yearlings. Again, the strategy, win a big one, hit a grand slam, syndicate the horse, and ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Mike? All right, thanks, Bob. And here with Bob Baffert, he's having a little trouble at the moment. The girth that was sent over was a little too short for Calf Wayne. He's got a new one. It looks a little bit better. Bob, it worked much better the second time around. I got big horses. <laughs> and have you sounded all three of them? Is this your third one? That was a quarter horse girth they brought out by mistake. <laughs> Does that happen often? Oh, yeah, all the time. These jockeys, they, uh, they make all this money, but they don't buy good girth. <laughs> Now, you've got three horses here. You've got Calf Wayne, you've got Bull Market, they ran one, two in the Norfolk, and of course you've got Vindication, who ran such a race in the Kentucky Cup at uh, Turfway Park. Uh, compare the three. Well, they're all good friends. They're all stable next to each other, so um, hopefully um, they all have different styles. Bull Market's a speed horse. He'll probably be on the lead or near it. Calf um, Wayne likes a stock. Vindication, um, he, he can run near the lead or stock. What so. about that trip at Turfway? That was a horrendous trip. We don't want that kind of trip today. We want a cleaner trip. So um, I think the break will tell everything. And so down the backside, I just hope they're 
in contention to uh, be in a good spot. All right, thank you, Bob. And what about the training up with Ka with uh, Vindication? The training? The training up to the race instead of having another race. Well, uh, I didn't want to take a chance of getting him hurt. Uh, the race at Turfway was it was good enough for me. So, uh, you know, fresh uh, horses can be very lucky. He's by Seattle Slough. He ought to get the mile and an eight. He's got the breeding. Yeah. I don't know about the trainer, though. Great job. All right, thank you, Bob. Bob Baffert got three of them in here. Good luck to Bob. Well, why, why, why is the surprise favorite, but at 11 to 1, Listen Indy deserves another look. He's trained by Dick Mandela, who has already won a Breeders' Cup, or two Breeders' Cup, in fact. And this colt is by AP Indy, who, of course, won the Classic, so we know that distance is absolutely no problem. He won his first start at a distance of ground uh, at a mile and then came back and was third, beaten only a length and a fast closing third in the Norfolk Stakes against Baffert's top two of Calf Wayne and Bull Market. So I think that this distance of a mile and an eighth around two turns, we might see a real star emerge here with Listen Indy. But of course, it is the distance and the configuration of the track that is a big issue for these Colts today. They're going a mile and eighth around two turns. None of these two-year-olds have been this far before, and it's going to be very demanding. And there is Mike Smith, who will be aboard Vindication, who is one of the Colts, being by Seattle Slew, who's going to really relish this extra distance. But this is a challenge for these young Colts to get a mile and an eighth this November of their two-year-old year. And we'll see them do it when we come back. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers, he uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now, as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. I printed and collated the color report that won the big account and got us into a larger office. And this is the respect I get? I need a hug. Toshiba copiers make you look good. Does Robo Cat cough up Robo hairballs? It's metal, but that's not the point. The chips that power Robo Cat are only manufactured in Palo Alto, but the assembly plant is in Tokyo. If my girlfriend gets Robo Cat, would it be jealous of me? Of you? Yeah. No. Now focus. They ship the chips with FedEx International Services. Get time definite, reliable service to Tokyo. Robocat's the biggest thing to hit Japan since Godzilla. Did I get it? Yeah, you're fine. Post time in 20 minutes. Well, it is a Scott Lake. Hmm, Bobby Frank. 400 winners last year? Is there a stakes race that guy didn't win last year? Front bandage is two? <laughs> You'll need more than that, Lee. What is this, Simon Says? You got no chance, Lee. Let's see what this race looks like. Scared of a little competition? Oh, no. Don't tell me he uses the form, too. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. I've waited for this night my whole life. NBC Sunday on an all-new American Dreams. Is this what every date is supposed to feel like? An episode of television that will make you believe in miracles. American Dreams, NBC Sunday. Park and the two-year-old Colts are leaving the paddock for the juvenile when they try a mile and an eighth for the very first time. The public thinks that YYY has the best chance of getting the job done. YYY, I wonder, Bob Newmeyer. Well, Chelsea, a few years ago when I was doing hockey play-by-play -play for the Boston Bruins, we had a right winger named Rick Tockett, and he was a feisty guy, a veteran, a slugger boy, and a big game player if there ever was one. Well, number 14 today, Tockett, spelled differently, T-O-C-C-E-T, -C -C -E clerical error left out the H, is named after this right winger that now plays for the Philadelphia Flyers. And Tockett ran in the Champagne Stakes recently at Belmont and closed like the wind up the rail. Should appreciate the extra distance, so hockey fans throughout the country might have a hunch bet with number 14, not Rick, but just Tockett. Chelsea? All right, well, we'll keep
keep that in mind. Tockett, of course, hung out in that wide 14 post, but his trainer, John Scanlon, says he's the best horse he's ever had his hands on, and he's rapidly improving. So that's the kind of horse we're looking for here today, and he certainly wants to get the distance. You know, Charlie, we talked about this uh, earlier today. The juvenile has often been considered an early indicator of next year's Kentucky Derby, but the winner of the juvenile has never gone on to win the Derby. Why? Well, it's a, they call it a jinx. I think it's probably an unfair saying because so many winners of the juvenile really weren't predisposed to be Kentucky Derby horses. They really were advanced sprinters, and sometimes the horses who won the juvenile were very unlucky in the Derby. I think it's been a matter of coincidence, but with the juvenile being a mile and an eighth this year, I truly believe we're going to see for the first time the juvenile winner could very well catapult into the Kentucky Derby. So let's meet these horses and see which one would have the best chance. Why, why, why? I'm sure parents everywhere will identify with this name. <laughs> yes. Patrick Bianco named him for his little son, who's called YY for obvious reasons. It's his first start around two turns. Yeah. And here's the first of Bob Baffert's trio. This is Calf Lane. You saw Bob had to get a bigger girth. This is a big, sturdy horse. Very game winner of the Norfolk. He now faces more distance and a bigger feel. He's by Cherokee one, Run, who won the sprint in 1994. And hold that tiger from the team that gave us Johannesburg in last year's Juvenile. He has a very American pedigree, and he showed the most astonishing turn of foot, winning a French Group 1 last time out. He must have passed 13 horses in the last eighth of a mile. Here's Listen Indy. We talked about him in the paddock, late developing colt by AP Indy, and he is the one who will really relish this extra mile and an eighth distance. Fairly lightly raced, but a lot of future in front of him, I believe. Here's Bull Market. He is one of Bob Baffert's. He finished a very game second in the Norfolk and only his third lifetime start. And Baffert says we haven't seen the best of him yet, and I believe it. The pedigree says the distance won't hurt. One more from Bob Baffert's barn. He's triple teaming us today. This is Vindication, and he has rewarded owner Satish Sanan's $2 million investment with an unblemished record so far, though this will be his toughest test so far. He might be the best suited for the distance of all of them. And here's Van Nisselroy, $6.4 million yearling. He lost his last two starts in England and Ireland, but trainer Aidan O'Brien staunchly maintains his faith in this flashy cult. Here's Lone Star Sky. As you might have guessed, he's owned by a Texan, but he knew of Austin. This colt has been first or second in every start. He's bred to love the distance, and he wears blinkers today as trainer Tom Amos wants to get him up a little closer into the game. Here comes Zavada. This is the other colt from Patrick Biancone. He's a stable mate to YYY. He was all the rage in the shorter races this summer, but physical problems have compromised his schedule, and the distance is a really big question mark. Here's another one from the Aiden O'Brien Stables. This is Tomahawk. He has the right American pedigree. He's by Seattle Slew, but he's got a desperate post position to overcome. He ran only a week ago today in England's Dewhurst Stakes. If the trip didn't take a lot out of him and he can overcome that post, he might be an interesting horse to watch. And here's Most Fear. The horse, the owner, and the trainer are all Texans. Most Fear will love the distance. He's already a three-time winner around two turns, including the Arlington Futurity right here over this track. But he's got that post position, a real issue, going a mile and an eighth with these babies. Wando is one of Canada's top two-year-olds. He's won all three of his starts on the dirt, including the gray stakes at a mile and a sixteenth, which earned him a ticket here to Chicago. And last but not least, close to the outside fence will come Tockett, rapidly improving son of the classic winner, awesome again. He won the Champagne in New York and seems to be getting better and better. And he's trained very sharply here this week. He seems to be happy here at Arlington. Could run well if he can get out of that gate. All right, fellas, this is a real wide open race. Tell me what you think. <laughs> You're right, Charles. It is wide open with the scratch of Sky Mesa, the uh, probable favorite in this race. But I agree with what you said about the mile and eight. Very interesting to stretch out to a mile and eight. Had to do that because of the configuration of Arlington Park. But if we see the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner go on to win the Kentucky Derby, we might see this as a permanent change, Bob. Well, my words for this race are simple. Why, why, why not? This is a real wise guy horse today, folks. Look at those odds. Slam down from a six to one morning line to the current odds of two to you one. You gotta remember why? the favorite was scratched now, Bob. He was scratched, okay, indeed, so <laughs> but still two to one.
because uh, a couple of things. Number one, he ran very, very fast at Belmont Park. The reason why this picture is so dark, there was a very nasty <laughs> thunderstorm that hit Belmont Park that day. And why, 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 granted, is bred for the off track is sire Mr. Greeley out of an R. A quiet American mare enjoys the moisture in the track, but tremendous speed in this race. And the fact that he's worked so well uh, this week, Mike, has got him slammed down from your bogus morning line of mm, six to yeah, one, right. down to where he should be in the two to one area. He's five to two right now. He's the third choice on the program, which would have made him the second choice on the program. Uh, Vindication, the horse that I made second choice at four to one, is the second choice right now, and that's going to be my pick. Uh, this is a horse that's three for three, and he over here's a shot of Vindication. He looked great on the racetrack, and uh, this is a son of Seattle Slough. I think he'll like the mile and an eighth distance. Baffert said he's the best of his three. This this is the start of the Kentucky Cup. That's him in the four hole. Now he breaks bad enough, but the horse next to him throws his rider, ducks into vindication. Most two year olds would have chucked it at this point. He was dead last. Look at the move that he makes in the turn. He just flies by this field in the turn. The race was over at this point. Now, granted, he did not beat a great field in the Kentucky Cup at Turfway Park, but you have to like the way that this horse did it. Anytime a two-year-old shows that much professionalism to overcome that much trouble, I think he's a solid contender here, and I'm putting him on top. Okay, this is the toughest race in the card for my money. Two-year-olds extending from a mile and a 16th to a mile and an eighth. Anything is possible. Anything is likely to happen and probably will. Let's go to Bob Costas. Okay, Bob and Mike, uh, worth noting that our handicappers are each two for five to this point. Let's see what the cyber cappers think. Remember, they don't have to put their names and faces on it like Numi and Mike. They don't have to back it with their dough like the folks here at Arlington Park. But they like YYY as well with Vindication second. Charles. Well, and they like Hold That Tiger third, and there he is, American pedigree all the way through. Storm Cat out of a caveat mare making his first start around two turns. He should like it here at Arlington. We'll see. Year after year, people you know and trust feed more and more of us. All for as little as seven cents of our food dollar. No other country has such a healthy diet or such variety in agriculture. So the next time you meet a farmer or rancher, say thanks to the growers of things we eat and the fiber we wear. The North American Farmer putting food on our table. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood. Crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. for the first time in their life. 
including YYY. In spite of that fact, the public has made him the 5-2 to two choice. They're also paying attention to both of Bob Baffert's Colts, Bull Market and Vindication. And there is a look at YYY. He's not the biggest or the most robust, but he's a very pretty Colt, and he's certainly trained beautifully here all week. There's a look at Lone Star Sky, who's been very consistent but hadn't met this kind. Bob Baffert looking on to see if he can kind of break a little bit of a Breeders' Cup jinx he's got going for himself as well as he's done in the Triple Crown races. He's only two for 29, I believe it is, here in the Breeders' Cup. Hasn't been really kind to him. There's Lone Star Sky waiting patiently to go into the gate. He is wearing blinkers today for the very first time. They're double loading here. That's Calf Wayne going into the gate on the inside with Victor Espinosa, who will be riding War Emblem later today. And there's a look at Hole That Tiger. He's been getting some attention at the windows. Unfortunate day for the O'Brien stable. It would be nice to have a big run from Hole That Tiger. And there is Zavada going in. And as they load, it's time to go to Tom Durkin for the call of the juvenile. And there goes uh, Bull Market, who's uh, so game in his last race, one of three that uh, Bob Baffert sends into the juvenile. There's Most Fear, Midwestern Horse, and uh, from Canada, right there, number 13, just going by, is Owando. In the background, the uh, Baffert Brigade and Vindication. Owando just walking just a bit behind the starting gate. All these horses are very uh, relatively inexperienced. Uh, four, five stars uh, at the most for any of them. There goes Van Nisseroy in post number seven on the outside. The winner of the Champagne Stakes, Tocket breaking from post position number 14 with his very short run into the first turn here at Arlington Park going a mile and eighth. And Tocket uh, a little gate shy as well. Boy, the betting here is a little, a little strange. Uh, five to two favorite and YYY. He's a bit of a surprise as the favorite here. We'll see. The public's got it right. They're in the gate for the juvenile, and they're off. And Vindication breaks in stride, and Vindication's gone for the lead. Hold that Tiger and Tomahawk, the two Europeans, broke second to last and last. Vindication takes the field into the clubhouse turn, and Bull Market gets off to a good start. He's down toward the inside in good position early, running in second. Wando, the Canadian, third on the outside. And then it's most feared in between horses, running in fourth. The favorite, YYY, rides the rails. He's a little rank. Steadied in traffic is YYY. He's fifth. Tockett, only three lengths for the lead. Racing in the clear. He is now sixth. Copwane, seventh toward the inside. Listen, Indy is now eighth. Hold that. Tiger is under a ride already. He's on the far outside. In between horses is Lone Star Sky. Then Van Nisselroy, followed by Tomahawk. And uh, trailing the field there is Hold That Tiger as the field moves up the backstretch. Vindication short lead through a half that goes in 46 seconds flat. Testing fractions here into the far turn. Vindication grappling with Bull Market. Those two head to head. Why, why, why? Right up there. Tracking third. Wando Espermore run fourth. Most feared is now fifth. And then it's Cop Wayne racing in sixth position. Hold That Tiger begins to roll now. He's seventh on the outside, launching a bid with two and a half furlongs to go. Cop Wayne is still in with the fighting chance in between horses. Vindication and Bull Market. Baffert 1-2 as the field turns for home. Most Beard is running third. Here comes Copwain. Hold that Tiger spun into the sixth bat at the top of the stretch. Baffert's 1-2-3. Vindication. Bull Market toward the inside. Followed by Copwain. Hold that Tiger is fourth. They're down to the final 16. It's still Baffert 1-2-3. Vindication. Copwain moves the second. Bull Market third. Hold that Tiger is fourth. second hold that tiger managed third after a disastrous break and bull market was fourth vindication gets off to a good start today speed doing very well here at arlington park this afternoon and there's the trainer of the first two finishers as well as the fourth mr bob baffert great success and mike smith who has been absent from the winner's circle here for five years prior to today, bags another victory. He does it with vindication, stalking the early pace here. The pace was a pretty strong one as well. 46 seconds flat, going right out and 
really not seriously challenged by his stable mates or anyone else for that matter as vindication goes on to win he had a very impressive victory in his last outing he did not break well and then he shot past the field like secretariat in the preakness turning for home in that race and today he does it breaking well and running on the lead let's go out to donna who's got a very happy jockey in one mike smith Mike, yeah, I'm so happy for you. Going into today's card, you hadn't won a Breeders' Cup race since 97. Today you get your second. You've got to be happy. Oh, Donald, I'm, I don't even describe it. I'm just not so happy right now. I just want to thank the Lord. I mean, this Colt, uh, people were talking about his buyers, that they weren't very fast. Donald, but they never watched this Colt really, really run. He just does what he has to do. Today he showed him. He got away really well today. I was able to kind of give him a breather down the backside. And when I called on him just before he headed for home, Boy, he just gave me a burst of speed and it was over then. I just kept busy because he's looking at the gate and everything, you know? Right. In his last race, he overcame a tremendous amount of adversity and closed well. He certainly did, and, and in that race, he beat a loose horse. Right. Horses don't usually do that, you know, and he beat a loose horse running, so he showed me then what he was really about. Exactly. Mike, congratulations you, to you. Charles Lee, looks like another horse is going to have to try to defend that uh, jinx in the uh, derby this year or next year. Well, you're right about that, Donna, but I said earlier, and I do truly believe it, that this is the year the jinx is broken. This could be the horse. Vindication is now undefeated in four starts, and he is obviously happy with the distance. He is a January foal, and that was a big help. He had a couple of extra months of growing time on the rest of this field, and that helped him going a mile and an eighth today, a mile and a quarter next stop. Centuries of breeding, endless attention and education, countless days of training, now distilled to a single moment in time and a single goal. Performance. Performance. Made possible by many skilled people spanning generations. Performance. Bessemer Trust. Enhancing private wealth for generations. Enjoy Guinness anywhere. Authentic Guinness draft in a bottle. What are claustrophobics doing in an elevator? Facing their fears, but you're missing the point. Someone's joining us. On our way to ship important packages, a small business owner gets on the elevator with them. But instead of panicking, her survival instincts kick in. Stop, drop, and roll? <sighs> yeah, that's it. What I'd do. Well, she remains calm, knowing FedEx has fast, reliable service with a money-back guarantee, proving there was nothing to fear but fear itself. I'm afraid of heights. This isn't about you. Okay. By supporting NTRA charities and its affiliates, you help horses stay safe and healthy before, during, and after their racing careers. You help the people and the communities that are home to NTRA member tracks and farms. And you help Ronald McDonald House charities worldwide. NTRA Charities, serving our community and yours. It's Long John Silver's boatload of seafood, crunchy shrimp, batter dip shrimp, plus our famous batter dip fish and sides. Our biggest variety platter ever, just $6.99. Our biggest combo, just $3.99. So much great seafood for such a great price, it turns any place into seafood country. second race of the day he has done it with the newly crowned juvenile champion vindication in the silks of satish sanan who has spent millions and millions on thoroughbreds with some 
success. Well, he got a good deal of success today with Vindication, who was 4-1, to one, returning $10.20 to win. Bob Baffert finishing second with Kopp Wayne and Hold That Tiger. Nothing but bad luck for him today, finishing third to complete a trifecta that returned $1,131. Let's go downstairs for more analysis. Well, Tom, Coolmore Stud has had some tough luck today. Certainly, Lancier, the tragedy there. Uh, Rocket Gibraltar having the tough trip. And now their fine juvenile, Trevor, certainly hold that Tiger. Had some issues in this race today. Very unlucky. The Vindication won very well. Let's just say that right up top. But hold that Tiger. Just had a horrible start. Had a rough trip the whole way around. You know, he had to go wide on the turn. He really just wasn't, it wasn't his day this afternoon. Let's go down now and take a look at that start, actually. We'll watch the horse right here in the number three stall right there let me just clear that he's actually right here um, in the number three stall there we go right there now watch him the rest of the horses come out cleanly the 11 tomahawk is going to be very slowly away as well see this he just stands flat-footed and it's tough to judge from this angle but he loses a good five lengths right there and tomahawk the horse in the black towards the outside and there you go again with the with the difference in our breeders cup day races with the english riders against the american riders the horses over there don't want to break fast now here he is right here on the outside again he's, he's going to have to go a little wide that's going to be hold the tiger right there he's had to make up a lot of ground as well on his inside is tomahawk again there you can see the rider really really having to ask him to run he probably wouldn't want to move this early had he got a better start he wouldn't have had a use him up this much and look right here he's probably going to be five wide going into the turn and there's the horse on the inside calf wayne in the green cap is getting a better trip than him as you can see he's hung out real wide here and at the bottom of the day the end of the day hold that tiger at a huge race to finish third look at him he's gritty here he's running his heart out uh, the, the winner was too good vindication too good but hold that tiger obviously should have been second a very very game run considering the circumstances now, the final speed figure of this race will not be that strong because of the slow finish but when you yes. go 109 and change yes. as a two-year-old around two turns as vindication yes. did that is some mean speed fractures on the front end being put up even though they got leg weary at the end oh definitely and i believe <laughs> i believe so much too on the horse itself and vindication he's got the breeding you know he's beautifully bred the, the, the dam is by a sire who could run a mile and a half he's got the looks he's got the trainer i mean kentucky derby vindication is the horse you can have to beat for sure let's go over to mike tag here Thanks, Trevor. And anybody that watched that race can't help but think of Vindication Sire Seattle Slough. This horse really reminded us of Seattle Slough. The way he ran goes out there, gets three quarters and nine and change, and just romps home a huge effort. Satish Sanan, the owner, Bob Baffer, the trainer, another win for Mike Smith to make the presentation. We've got Stuart Janney, the chairman of Bessemer Trust. Stuart. Well, congratulations, Satish Sanan, Bob Baffert, Mike Smith back there. That horse ran a great, great race. And I'm going to give you this trophy, and I'm going to tell you that it's very heavy, so be careful. And Satish Sanan, congratulations. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Well, I think it's difficult to express right now. You know, we, we've been uh, so nervous and excited for a long period of time. We've, uh, you know, we, <laughs> no, I do, I do. I mean, we love this game. We've invested a great deal of money in this game. and. You know, it's uh, long overdue, and it's, it's nice to win with a coat like this. I mean, he's, he's extremely well-bred, and Bob's done a, just a tremendous job with this horse. A stupendous effort. Bob, come over here. That was just a, a huge effort this horse turned in. Like I said, he reminded us so much of Seattle Slough with the way he ran today. It was just like, I'm going out there, I'm going to the front, come catch me, I dare you. Yeah, I was a little bit worried when I saw my two uh, horse out there, Bull Market. Right. I was, you know, I said, well, I'm going to burn myself up. Here we go. But uh, I told Satis that if this horse wins, he's definitely going to become a paparazzi horse. I think he just became one today. I mean, that was just huge. He ran one, two, of course, Calf Wayne ran uh, second, and Bull yeah, Market Bull was, yeah, was fourth. a little tired there at the end. He ran. I was proud of all three of them. And uh, it's just a great feeling to have these two-year-olds and, and the clients that I have. And the track is in excellent shape today. I mean, for after the weather, this... This, this is the most beautiful racetrack in America. You know, it's good to come here. And you knew, going back uh, before even the Kentucky Cup, how good this horse was. When he ran that race in the Kentucky Cup, justified your uh, faith in this horse. Well, I, after that race, if he would have run uh, bad there, uh, I probably would have run him again. But I was just so excited about the race. He got left. He knew he had a little bit of trouble there at the start. But uh, I think that's the way he wants to run. And, and today, he just got out there by himself. I got a little bit worried the way he was looking at everything down the stretch. But uh, he's a pretty courageous horse. He showed that today. 
and he could be the one to break the Derby jinx. Come over here, Mike Smith. Uh, I know you've got to be feeling very emotional right now. It's your second Breeders' Cup win. You've had so much adversity with a broken back. You don't need that hat on. Tell us how you're feeling right now, Mike. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Satish and his family uh, just for sticking with me. And, and, and Bob, uh, not only is he a, a great trainer, but he's a great coach. Uh, he's instilled a lot of confidence in me. He's He's been telling me all along that, that I'm riding great and you're doing well. Just go out there and ride your race. And, and I want to thank him a whole lot. He's helped me out a bunch. Yeah, they say you're the best, Mike. Thank you. He's a big money rider. <laughs> big money. Front row. Uh, thank you, guys. Congratulations to Mike Smith, to Bob Baffert, Satish Sinan, and uh, this could be the one, Bob. This could be the one to break that Breeders' Cup Derby jinx. Charles <laughs> There's a whole lot of vindication going on in that winner's circle. Bob Baffert has won three Kentucky Derbies, but this is his first Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner vindication. And Calf Wayne, Bob Baffert's co finished one, two. And another tough element for the Coolmore gang today, Tomahawk was pulled up. Apparently all right. You know, Charles, so you mentioned earlier some past juvenile winners may not have been well suited to run a mile and a quarter uh, on the first Saturday in May, but Vindication is by Seattle Slough, so you'd have to think that at least by his breeding, a Vindication can get the distance. Absolutely. I mean, he showed everything he needed today to be a legitimate derby favorite. I mean, it isn't all over. There will be other horses coming out, but he certainly goes to the head of the class. He's actually kind of a long, tall, leggy colt, so he'll have some developing and filling out. He'll be even better come spring. He was really quite precocious to do what he's done this fall, being the, bred the way he is and looking the way he does. So he's a pretty exciting prospect. Baffert goes 1-2. Everybody will be talking about him and his charges heading into the Derby. Anything else you saw coming out of the juvenile that people will be pointing toward next spring? Well, I think that it's, again, the first time around two turns, it's hard to say. There were excuses. Certain horses got left. Maybe Aiden O'Brien would be tempted to bring hold that Tiger back over. He had a dastardly trip, and he might might want to try the Derby again. All right, and so I sit here in Tom Hammond's seat and uh, <laughs> wonder what we do next. Tom would know just I, instinctively I what, Tom's doing what we do right next. Now. Tom's sitting with a remote control, yes. grading our efforts. <laughs> ah, here we go. Bob Baffert's reaction's coming up. One more look at it. His horses go 1-2 in the juvenile. And what would his reaction be? Jill Pretty says, happy, well, other than excitement. I don't know how much vindication he needs, given all the success he's had, but his vindication was there at the finish line. Jill Baffert emotes enough for both of them, but he's got plenty to be happy. Halloweens in the ER are legendary. I am the Marquis de Sade. And this year is no exception. Anything that can happen will happen. And special guest star Don Cheadle. What the hell are you doing? In a controversial role that will have everyone talking. Are you okay? It's never been better. All new ER, NBC Thursday. Channel 2 News Daybreak is a fast and friendly morning show. Good morning, 625. We like back. to call it Info to Go. Glad you could join us. We keep you up to the minute from the minute you get up. Here's a look at today's top stories. Keep you watching.